It's my honor and privilege to introduce to you West Virginia University's 35th head football coach, Neil Brown. West Virginia is culture. It fits my DNA. West Virginia is a special place where we can accomplish great things. Those that possess great competitive character will strive here. We're going to take shots down the field, create explosive plays. We're also going to be very physical up front. We're going to run the football. On defense, we'll be aggressive with one goal, getting the ball back. We're going to work. We're going to compete. We're going to have fun. At the end of the day, we're going to make you proud. I cannot be more excited to be your head football coach. Hugh Country Road, let's go Mountaineer. A new era has begun in Morgantown. Neil Brown has taken the reins of the West Virginia football program, and today will be his first game as the Mountaineers head coach. His Mountaineers will host an FCS powerhouse in James Madison, a national champion three seasons ago, and the second-ranked team at that level heading into this season. Here's a look at Neil Brown's resume in thumbnail form as he gets set to join the Mountaineers program. He was named the head coach on January 5th, taking over for Dana Holgerson. He come from Troy, where he had a 35 and 16 record and three consecutive 10 win or more seasons. One of just six coaches to accomplish that feat at the FBS level. Good afternoon. Thanks for being with us at Milan Push Car Stadium in Morgantown alongside former West Virginia star Rashid Marshall. I'm Rob King. Rashid, you played through one of these coaching changes. Don Nealon leaves. Rich Rodriguez takes over. Not always as easy as fans would like to think it is. It's not easy at all. And the biggest thing is, as players, you have to buy in. The coaches have a big picture as to what they want it to look like. In year one, they're building a foundation. So the biggest thing as a player, you have to buy in. And then you have to believe in the system. From there, you continue to work. You build that foundation. Every single year, it improves. And from there, you try to see success. Athletic director. Shane Lyons has preached patience in the Neil Brown era, in part because Will Greer and his cast of receivers, all this offensive talent is gone heading into the 2019 season. Yeah, I think patience is the key word here. West Virginia's offense will look completely different this season. They're going to have to step up and, again, trust in the system. But West Virginia is losing what could go down, arguably, as the most talented, productive, and explosive aerial attack in this school's history. The biggest thing for this offensive unit is to find a leader, find out who's going to emerge as the playmakers, and three, get some of these young guys to respond when their number is called. And the offensive leader, at least the guy who's going to be at the quarterback position to begin the season, is Oklahoma transfer Austin Kendall. I've been in Austin Kendall's position before. He's going to have to relax, just make sure he remembers at the end of the day, this is football. Go out there, execute your, your game plan, and try to make plays. Use the playmakers around you. A lot of excitement around the West Virginia program. Same for James Madison, a powerhouse. Also with a new coach, Kurt Signetti. His father, Frank Signetti, was a coach at West Virginia, so some ties there. And his quarterback is Ben DiNucci, who's from up the road in Pittsburgh. Ben DiNucci is a heck of a player. For James Madison, they're going to have to get him juiced up early. I don't think he has to play particularly perfect, but he's going to have to continue to uh, be productive. He counted for 25 touchdowns a season ago. Did have some issues with turnovers. He's going to have to clean that up, come out here, try to utilize his weapons around him, and James Madison could escape with a victory today. So the Mountaineers taking the field, and by the way, uh, they won the toss. They elected to defer. Here's the temperature, 82 degrees. Very nice. And we've been here when it's been pushing 100, Rashid. It's been a little warmer here. Last year it poured during the opener. West Virginia wins a toss. They elect to defer, so they'll go on defense first to begin the Neil Brown era. Should mention, by the way, the fact that Riley Stapleton, the leading receiver for James Madison, will not play today. He'll miss the first three games, so potentially big loss for the James Madison offense. As we take a look at some of the rule changes to keep an eye on, the two players on the receiving team lining up shoulder to shoulder. You can't link arms. You can't whether you're blocking for an extra point or for punt coverage, you can't have the old wedge. So that's something to keep an eye on and some new blindside rules. Again, more player safety rules as well. That's right. It's more so for player protection and safety. But uh, I'm sure the guys, coaches, they will figure out ways to, to work their scheme around that. 
can change a few things special teams wise for both sides. Evan Staley getting set to kick off for West Virginia. The Mountaineers fired up a sold out crowd in Morgantown. Ready to usher in the Neil Brown era. Back deep to receive is Brandon Polk, Penn State transfer, several Division I transfers for James Madison. D'Angelo Amos, who is a All-American punt returner, also back in deep formation with Brandon Polk. Evan Staley, the run-up, and the Neil Brown era begins. Kick will be taken by Polk a yard deep. He'll bring it out. Crosses the 10, the 15, finds a little bit of room, slithers over the 20 and out to the 22 where he's taken down. Ball popped loose, but it was said that he was down so it will remain James Madison ball. So we talked about how important special teams is and how much Neil Brown emphasizes special teams. Very hard to get a look on your unit in camp because, for one, you don't want to get your guys hurt, and it's hard to simulate that same intensity and tail game where rolls around so special teams will play a part in this football game here's Ben DiNucci Pine Richland Pennsylvania player of the year started a half a dozen games at Pitt moved on to James Madison their starter a year ago now his second season at the helm and here's a handoff up the middle push Isaiah Obese with the short run he'll pick up about three maybe four crossing the 25 out to the 26 20 of 22 starters returning for James Madison they are breaking in some new running backs Percy Ajay Obese who we saw there Juwan Hamilton who started at UCF transferred to James Madison they do feel good about their stable of running backs one of the few positions in which they are untested and as Jay Obisay again with the run, he'll get out to about the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up a third and short. So early on, we can see James Madison trying to test this West Virginia defense, actually see if they're physical enough to handle this running attack. James Madison not necessarily big up front, but still trying to establish in that run early. All five starters return, although one of those starters beaten out. They have a new starter at left guard in Trubel Wilson. Very good, experienced offensive line. And here's a handoff, and... Jay Obese is met in the backfield, will not pick up the first down as he gets to the 31-yard line, needed to get to the 32. So James Madison comes right out in the Kurt Signetti era and begins with three consecutive runs, and now they will send out their punt team. That's a very good job getting penetration up front by that West Virginia defensive line. Multiple blue hats around the ball carrier, and I think that's a statement again by James Madison trying to see if West Virginia is physical enough to handle this run attack. Excellent special team for James Madison. Harry O'Kelly, a rugby-style kicker from Queensland, Australia. Back to punt it away. T.J. Simmons and Alex Sinkfield back deep for West Virginia. And this is a short kick. Have to be careful, get out of the way if you're West Virginia. James Madison will swarm around the ball and let it roll dead at the 30-yard line. So 39-yard punt for O'Kelly and now West Virginia. The Neil Brown era gets underway on offense after a three and out defensively. Yeah, we talked about Kendall in the open. I think this is going to be a very big drive for him. For Kendall, the important thing is to come out, remain relaxed, try to execute within his game plan, and just find a rhythm. Find something that's going to be comforting for you, that's going to get you into your rhythm. Keep that game focused and let the guys around you help you out. You don't have to do it all on your own. Austin Kendall sitting behind Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, a couple of Heisman Trophy winners at Oklahoma, has transferred to West Virginia, getting his opportunity to start. McCoy in motion. Take the pet away. They'll go to McCoy. Hit and drop immediately. A loss on the play. So quick screen trying to get McCoy involved. Wayne Davis, Ohio State transfer. Makes the stop for James Madison. And yeah, we've heard a lot about McCoy coming out of backfield and how versatile he is. This play is not going to work unless T.J. Simmons is able to get that block on the defender. If he can't hold that block, that play doesn't go. And right there we saw the defender from James Madison doing a good job of straining a little hard and being able to make that tackle. Quick throw into heavy coverage. And the ball complete to Simmons, but his helmet is rested off. And again, a player safety issue. So they're going to whistle it dead right there at the 30-yard line. Boy, tough little throw there by Kendall. Yeah, very small window. You know, not necessarily ideal. Very dangerous. Had that linebacker had his head around from James Madison. That's 52. May have been able to get a hand on it. 
So back to the original original line of scrimmage here. It's going to be a third and ten. Kendall back. Looking has time out in the flat. It's complete to McCoy. McCoy nowhere to go and is dropped for a loss in the play. So James Madison comes out and does a fine job defensively themselves, forcing a punting situation for West Virginia. Now, I think we're learning early here how energetic this James Madison defense is. These guys are in position, able to make some plays, and right now West Virginia three and out, ready to punt here back to James Madison. Very, very dangerous return man, and D'Angelo Amos averaged 22 yards a return as a punt returner a season ago. And Harry, or uh, Josh Groudon, the new punter, uh, transfer from LSU for West Virginia, rugger style, left-footed booter. Low liner, and Amos comes up and is muffs the ball. Did he make contact with it? He did, and so it'll be West Virginia ball. Amos muffed the punt, came up aggressively. Wasn't sure if he, did, he touched it originally. He had, and it will be West Virginia ball on the first turnover of the game. Yeah, you mentioned D'Angelo Amos, preseason All-American, very uh, good special teams player, just making a bad decision right there. You either have to go ahead and call that fair catch or commit to catching the ball and, and getting the established uh, return started. Right here, just misjudged it. Luckily, West Virginia was in place. They were able to recover. Right now, good starting position for this West Virginia offense. And it's x Low who comes up with a fumble recovery. Kendall back, throwing, hit as he throws. And that is Rondell Carter who came in to supply the pressure. Carter and Daka, two outstanding defensive ends, and that is definitely a concern for West Virginia breaking in some new offensive linemen. Yeah, you definitely want to keep an eye on number five, Rondell Carter, coming off of the edge. He's a defensive end, preseason All-American. He's going to apply a lot of pressure coming off of the edge, and right there showing Kendall that he's going to be in his face all day. And on the other side is Doc, who had 10 sacks last year as well. So a very formidable front four unit. Here's the pass out in the flat. It's McCoy. Makes a move, crosses the 30, gets down to the 28-yard line of James Madison, where it will present a third and two for the West Virginia offense. And we talked about Michelle, excuse me, McCoy's versatility uh, catching the ball out of the backfield. Right now, West Virginia just calling some safe plays, trying to get something established early on and get these guys loosened up a little bit. McCoy split out. It's Petaway, but I don't know if he was set, so he may have a legal motion. They tried to get the quick hitter to pet away, but it looked like McCoy was still moving out. Rasheed, and I think they're going to get him for not being set here. Part of the snap, false start. Offense number six. Not all 11 players became set after they're ready for play. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Well, a costly mistake, and again, the sort of thing you might expect with new unit, new quarterback. New offensive coordinator. Yeah, timing is, is it, it plays a big key in this offense, especially when you're doing a lot of motion. You have to wait until your guys are set. They'll call it every time. And it goes hard count. They give to Petaway off the right side and not much doing there. Picked up maybe a yard or so, so it's going to bring up a fourth down. And the question is, were you calling that to set up the Staley? That was McCoy in the run, I beg your pardon. Setting the up to Staley field goal attempt they were I, I wasn't sure if that maybe was a precursor to going for it on fourth down but they're going to bring Staley out for a long field goal attempt yeah for most kickers you want to try to get that ball lined up down the center of the field especially if it's a right footed kicker or left footed for that matter but you want to try to get that centered up in the middle of the field as best as possible 49 yard attempt for Staley hold down kick is up plenty of leg and it is no good. So West Virginia unable to take advantage of the muff punt by Amos. The missed field goal will remain scoreless in the first quarter at Milan Pushkar Stadium. had the chance to sit down with head coach Neil Brown yesterday and while he's excited about today he understands that mistakes will be made and he is at peace with that he said what he wants to see is energy and that next play mentality guys 
Hall of Famer Meg Bulger down on the sidelines for us. Thank you very much, Meg, getting inducted in a couple of weeks into the Hall of Fame. There's a chance that one of the two of us might make it into the Hall of Fame Possibly. one day. Possibly. Yeah. One day. <laughs> I'm not going to say which one of us it might be. Danucci back, looking to throw his first pass of the season. It is complete, and it is close to first down yardage. That is Kendall Dean. You know, I think that's a good point that Meg makes because there's one thing to play tentative and, and sort of relax, but if you play fast and you're not worried about making mistakes, at least you can make up uh, for that by, by just your intensity. So I think that's a very good, important point by North, Neil Brown to get his guys to fly around early. And out to Dean again. So Dean, two quick receptions at 47 a year ago. I mentioned Riley Stapleton is not in the lineup today. Won't play for the first three games for James Madison. Preseason All-American who had 62 receptions a year ago. So maybe a more steady diet of Kendall Dean who had 47 last year and five touchdowns, two receptions early here for the sophomore. And I was 24, Hakeem Bailey on the coverage. Just a very soft coverage. So underneath, the neutral will have that hitch curl route all game. And off right side, this is Solomon Van Horse, and Van Horse picks up what appears to be first down yardage. Oh, they moved the ball back slightly now. It's going to be near the sticks and just short, about a half a yard short of a first down. You know, one thing, and very similar to West Virginia, James Madison, uh, fairly deep at running back here, right there. That was 42 Van Horse. They're going to be able to kind of go running back by committee as well. Well, with the injuries to. Ajay Obese in Hamilton in the spring it was Van Horse who had some opportunities to shine took advantage of those opportunities you never know when your your chance might come and for Van Horse maybe a little bit buried in the depth chart those injuries gave him a chance to show what he could do and sometimes that's how it opens up we thought we had received a page but it was an inadvertent page third down if your pager shut off Rashid it wasn't you was it off. I was okay. going to ask you if all that right. was yours nope. was all right up here yeah, the officials today. Your number is called and you have to answer that that bell. So good job of Van Horst stepping in there. And here's Van Horst again, shoulders down and is able to squirm through traffic, break some tackles, and get down to the 42 yard line easily enough for a first down for Solomon Van Horst. And we're starting to see a little more yardage up the middle. That's that A gap on that West Virginia defensive line, but they'll continue to work that run game and, and test this first and second level by West Virginia's defense. And a motion is Brown. Ajay Obese back into the game, and Obese picks up about six yards on that first down run. And that was Josh Chandler on the tackle, 35 for West Virginia. We had a chance to talk with him yesterday. A lot of these defensive guys, they all said the same thing. They're coming into the season, with the chip on their shoulders if they have something to prove. So I'm sure Chandler's going to want to get out here and show what he has, show what he's able to do. Brown in motion again. Again, the give to Ajay Obese. This time, no success off the right side. And now West Virginia saying the ball popped loose. Officials converging. West Virginia has the football. They've come up with a fumble recovery. So West Virginia, the strip of Ajay Obese and the fumble recovery and a second turnover created here by the Mountaineers. Yeah, it's number 10, Dylan Tonkery, who came up with the ball at the end, trying to get a better look at it. Well, he looked like he was in pretty good position, but hit and the ball comes loose. I believe it might have been Quantel Reigns on the hit for West Virginia to pop that ball loose. Regardless, a second turnover already for James Madison. Yeah, Quantel Reigns, a richer freshman out of Aliquippa, coming down into the box being a physical force. Showing he's able to sh slow down in run support. Here's Petaway. Petaway up the middle will pick up a couple yards. Martel Petaway, you mentioned the deep stable of backs. We're not expecting to see Letty Brown today. However, Kennedy McCoy, the leading rusher, 800 yards a year ago. Martel Petaway, that was Sinkfield on the carry. I beg your pardon. Both those guys over 1,000 yards for their career. Alex Sinkfield, they love what he can do. He had a, a start last year and battled through some injuries. Also a guy we might see in the receiving game. And now it's Petaway, the long back. 
Well, called his number twice, and he finally got his first carry here off the left side. So he'll pick up about three to bring up a third and about four here for the Mountaineers. Yeah, West Virginia trying to just get these running backs going. This is the, the strong point to their offense. This is the backbone to that offense. So the more you can get these running backs in, we're going to see a lot of substitutions throughout the day. See which one of these guys has a hot hand and continue to feed them the football. Uh, from there, you can op start to open up the passing game. Right now, James Madison giving a bunch of different looks. They went two high safeties on that. But that run defense by James Madison is holding up to the test so far. Trips to the left. Now that's George Campbell in motion. Kendall back, looking, throws underneath, complete. Tackle broken, step through, and Simmons, by breaking that tackle, able to pick up the first down as he gets out to midfield. T.J. Simmons will have to step up on the perimeter as, as one of the older guys in the wide receiver room and show that he has the ability to lead this group. Last year, he didn't have to shoulder that much of the load. You had David Seals, you had Gary Jennings, but this year is going to be his year to have to step up. Right there, West Virginia just doing a simple crossing pattern underneath, trying to get a natural pick, and Simmons doing a good job picking up the first down. Kendall back, looking, throwing as a man, streaking deep. Throws it out there just too far for Sam James. James had a step and slightly overthrown by Kendall. Yeah, those are the ones you want back as a quarterback. He'll see this on film. Just that was Bryce Wheaton, more. I beg your pardon. Yep. It looks like it was Wheaton out there. Yep, Bryce Wheaton, the freshman. But you just get a little more air and let your receiver run under it. You have six on the board. They're very high on Bryce Wheaton. They love his upside. Here's the draw. This is Petaway. And Petaway will pick up close to four yards, crosses midfield, gets down to about the 46-yard line of James Madison. Now, I think one of the keys to this West Virginia offense is their offensive line. There was some shuffling going around up front. They tried to get guys fit into the right place. Uh, they had some some difficulties at center. They had to take some guys and, and move them into other positions that they weren't comfortable with playing. So I think this game being game number one right out of the box, you're going to find out a lot about yourself as, as a player and as a unit. West Virginia one for three on third downs. And now it looks like they're going to need a timeout here to talk this over. So let's take a break. 440 remains in the first quarter play scoreless. West Virginia in James Madison. No score in the opener between James Madison and West Virginia. West Virginia trying to take advantage of a second turnover that they've gotten so far in this first quarter. Yeah, it's been a turnover rid in first quarter. I see Angelo Amos on the muff punt right there, misjudge it. We saw Brunchell Reigns come down into the box show on that physical safety capability, knocking that football out. And they're going to have to continue to try to get something going offensively. It's just been a sloppy first quarter on both sides. Deal with the third and six here from West Virginia. Kendall back. And Kendall under duress, hit as he threw, trying to get it to McCoy out in the flat. It's incomplete. As Rashad Robinson, the 2017 All-American corner came in on a blitz and hit Kendall just as he threw. Yeah, James Madison has been doing a good job getting pressure on Kendall. And not that they're getting home and getting sacks, but as a quarterback, you know that that rush, you start to feel a little bit more. So it's going to be important for West Virginia's offensive line to just try to hold their blocks a little bit more. I'll keep an eye on, on James Madison's defensive line and seeing if they're trying to twist at all just to confuse this West Virginia offensive line. Ground back to kick. This was what he was excellent at at LSU. Kicks inside the 20-yard line, and Norwood is able to bat it out of the end zone. And the officials are going to call this a touchback, it appears. No, nope, they're going to say it's at the 7-yard line. That's where they're going to mark the ball. The two officials conversing. And they're going to mark this at the seven yard line. So excellent job by West Virginia's special team, James Madison, pin deep. Well, some uncertainty on the field because the officials weren't sure whether this should be ruled the touchback or ball down at the seven. So one official ruled touchback, the other downed it at the seven. And great effort here by Norwood, but they're saying that ball.
traveled into the end zone and therefore is a touchback. And so it'll be James Madison with the ball at the 20-yard line. Here's Polk in motion. Give off the left side. Oh, and Kyle continuing to push. Great effort there. That's uh, Van, Van Horse who's gotten some early work. Solomon Van Horse picks up about seven. And yeah, this is great eff extra effort up front by that James Madison offensive line doing a good job again. 35 Josh Chandler the middle linebacker the will linebacker for West Virginia on that initial stop. But James Madison is ripping off big chunks of yardage on the ground. He gave Van Horse six and he'll get the first down here as he gets another six out to the 32. And Kurt Signetti said he wanted to lead the Colonial Athletic Association and in fact all of FCS in running and he has come out right away and tried to establish that run. Again trying to prove a point and it's in the A and B gap of this offensive line for James Madison. They're, they're putting this West Virginia defense to the test and seeing if they're able to slow these running backs down that we've talked about from James Madison. Benucci looks like he wants to change something has the freshman Austin Douglas behind him. Very high on this freshman off the left side. Find some room cuts back and another nice hole off the left side picks up about eight on his first collegiate carry maybe even nine. You know, the one thing with establishing your offense early on unless you're just a true all out air raid offense you want to try to establish the run if the defense cannot slow your running backs down you're going to continue to test them continue to test them and right now James Madison is getting exactly what they want out of West Virginia they're able to get that push and own the line of scrimmage so until West Virginia is able to slow them down on the ground they'll continue to run the football here's Douglas again wrapped up by Chandler but not till he gets out close to midfield and James Madison ripping up huge chunks on the ground that's Austin Douglas Another great running back from James Madison. But again, you see these offensive linemen. They're climbing to the second label, level, able to get their hat on, on the linebackers from West Virginia. So not only are they combo blocking, they're working down to the second level, occupying the linebackers. West Virginia is showing pressure. So Danucci goes back, throws, looks, and ball is caught. Is he inbounds? He is. Polk with the reception at the 30-yard line. There's the Penn State transfer. 27 receptions for Penn State. A grad transfer and starting in his first game for James Madison. Yeah, he's a transfer from Penn State and started 10 games at Penn State. He's going to be a weapon for James Madison. And if, again, they can continue to run the football. It's just going to open up the passing game even more. Play action will prove very huge for James Madison as this game plays out. Danucci fires. It's Polk again. Oh, nice move. Polk inside the 20, inside the 10, wrestled out of bounds at the nine yard line. Oh, beautiful move by Polk. X3 Low is the guy who was able to stop him, but what a move by Polk. Yeah, very shifty once he has the ball in his hands. And for people who are familiar with the spin cycle, there's something a little different than a washing machine at your house. <laughs> once you get onto this football field, you get put into a spin cycle as a player. It's not a good thing. And right there, Keith Washington was nowhere to be found as Polk was able to gain some positive yardage. And horses check back in. He has the carry straight up the middle, and James Madison draws first blood on the Van Horse nine-yard touchdown run. The Dukes are up six-nothing. Once again, that offensive line for James Madison, they're able to get a hat on the hat. Exury low trying to come down into the box for some extra run support. But again, you work down into that second level and right there in that A gap where West Virginia is the weakest, they were able to find a hole and Van Horst was able to squeak through. It doesn't get any easier than that. Red shirt freshman Solomon Van Horst with the early touchdown. Ethan Ratke now on to try the extra point. Part of James Madison's very good special teams made all 35 of his attempts last year. And makes another one here. And so James Madison able to score first. The Solomon Van Horse nine yard touchdown run, and the Mountaineers find themselves down 7 0. Redshirt freshman Solomon Van Horse carried four times for 25 yards on that seven play, 80 yard scoring drive. The nine yard TD capping it off for a program that's used to winning. James Madison claimed the 2016. FCS championship the win over Youngstown State they also won in 2004 they've been to five straight postseasons this is a program 
Rashid used to winning and not surprised at all to find themselves up 7-0 in this game. A very rich tradition at James Madison, and right now they're in position to control this football game. I know it's still early. We're still in the first quarter. But again, until West Virginia can slow that running tackle down, they're going to be in for a long game. So there's going to have to be some defensive adjustments made. And one thing that James Madison is saying right now as an offensive unit, we're ready to get back out on the field. I can promise you Van Horse wants the ball one more time so he can try to do exactly what he did on that last series. So West Virginia is going to have to make some changes defensively here to slow them down. Camden Wise kicks off. It's Sam James at the five. James finds a crease, gets across the 25 to the 26-yard line, which is where James Madison's defense comes out and West Virginia's offense comes out. Mountaineers have had some good field position. They've created a couple of turnovers as we take a look at the return from James. And same, Sam James is a guy that uh, the West Virginia offensive staff is very high on. Neil Brown likes him. Uh, he's a young player, very fast, very speedy. So they're going to try to get him worked in, get the ball into his hands, and see if he can emerge uh, as a top playmaker for this West Virginia offense. Ball to 26-yard line. Kendall gives to Petaway. Petaway tries to get to the edge. Landon Word in pursuit, able to step out of that would-be tackle, but Morgan, uh, the fellows from... James Madison able to corral him and get him out of bounds. A good pursuit from the inside. Their work slowed him down just enough to allow the pursuit to come. Yeah, I was worried there initially, but Martel Petaway is not a small back. He's a strong, uh, low to the ground type of running back. So you're going to have to take his legs out to get him down. But he's a he's a very uh, big back. West Virginia needs to continue to try to incorporate him. But right now, I think the biggest thing for West Virginia try to open things up in this playbook. Kendall will give on the right side. This is McCoy, and McCoy runs right into Rondell Carter, who got the penetration and stops him for a two-yard loss. Yeah, we've talked about Rondell Carter. Again, this is a guy, very high motor. He loves the game of football. He said he's not taking a playoff. He's not taking a second off every time he's out on a field. This is the last go-round for him. So he wants to make every single play count, and right there he did just that. Tevin Bush checks in into the slot on the left. So two receivers split to either side for Kendall on a third and ten. Now here's one for four on third down. McCoy remains in the game to the right of quarterback Kendall. Kendall back. Pressure coming. Throws complete to Simmons. Simmons across the 40, across the 45. First down Mountaineers out to the 46. And that's exactly what West Virginia has to do. They need to take advantage of their athleticism on the outside. Right there, T.J. Simmons going man-to-man, -man, or James Madison trying to play man-to-man -man on T.J. Simmons. But Kendall, good job keeping his eyes down the field, finding T.J. Simmons coming across on that shallow cross. Great pass complete out in the flat. And that is McCoy. McCoy will get across midfield out to the 49-yard line. Pick up of about five yards on that first down play as the Mountaineers came right to the line of scrimmage and quickly called the play. You know, at this point, I know West Virginia, they, they want to try to get their running backs involved, but from now, you need to try to start to open up that playbook, push this ball down the field just a little bit more. Well, the opening of two eras, Neil Brown for West Virginia, Kurt Signetti for James Madison. The Dukes have turned the ball over a couple times. West Virginia unable to take advantage. And after the Van Horse nine-yard touchdown run, it is James Madison leading 7-0. James Madison up 7-0. Second quarter set to begin. The Mountaineers facing a second and five with the ball in James Madison territory at the 49-yard line. I think this is a good position for the West Virginia offense to be in. Second and five is very manageable, and it sets you up for third down as long as you don't lose any yardage. And the back throws complete to Simmons. Simmons stutter steps across the 40. Now to the 38-yard line, knocked out of bounds. First down as Kendall now is 8 for 11 for West Virginia. Again, I like T.J. Simmons a lot. He's going to have to be a guy for this wide receiving core, and I think... Neil Brown and offensive coordinator Matt Moore understands that they're going to have to continue to feed him, let him carry the load as, a, as, as the top receiver in the core, and help these other guys develop as they continue to grow. He's the most experienced amongst the group. Here's McCoy straight up the middle. Nothing doing, McCoy. Bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. 
initial stop in round number one. I think they feel good eventually about the top several players in their receiving core. Sean Ryan, the transfer from Temple. Sam James, the, the deep threat. George Campbell, former five-star recruit, transfer from Florida State. He's just checking out of the game. So, again, there's just so many unknowns right now for this West Virginia offense. Yep, and amongst all those guys, you, you, you did have Sean Ryan transfer, transfer in from Temple. Campbell came in from Florida State, but at the end of the day, the experience still isn't there. And here's James on the crossing route, and James showing the speed, flashing across the formation, out of bounds at the 22. First down for the Mountaineers. And that's Sam James, the young freshman, speedy freshman out of Georgia. They like him a lot in special teams in the return game and as a receiver. They think if he can continue to develop, he's going to be able to help this offense out a lot. 16-yard pickup. First down at the 22-yard line. Lone setback is McCoy. Kendall back looking throws underneath to James. James hit and now wrapped up as it's big Mike Green who closed from the inside. Boy, when those when those plays get a little upset timing wise, those big guys have a chance to get back into the play and Mike Green at 285 pounds able to Slam him down to the ground here. Yeah, that's the defensive tackle, 92, Mike Green. West Virginia trying to go with that tunnel screen again, getting the ball into the freshman's hands, Sam James, seeing if he can use that speed and get upfield. Right there, great play by Green. Second and nine, give him a yard in the play. Turn back, looking, floating, and attempted for Bryce Wheaton, a little too tall for him. Pretty good coverage downfield. They'll bring up a third and nine. I like the play call here by West Virginia. They're trying to take a shot. Bryce Wheaton is 6'3". He's a freshman as well, but they need to try to get him worked into the mix. Get him comfortable being out on the field and, and utilize his height and his athleticism. They like his upside, but you have to continue to work these young guys in. Give them a taste of what it's like being out on the field. So some confusion here in substitutions. It appears Alex Sinkfield comes in for McCoy. Now he'll split out to the right. Trips to the left. Two receivers to the right. Empty set for Kendall. On a third and nine. Kendall back looking underneath. And Sinkfield had room to run. But can't haul it in. That's a matchup they'll take all day. With Dimitri Holloway, the linebacker, in trail. But they couldn't connect. Yeah, Sinkfield can cause some matchup issues uh, being a running back, but he also has the capability of running routes as a receiver. But on that last play, had Kendall James taken his eyes to the far side of the football field, he would have saw T.J. Simmons dragging across. James Madison, defensive back, lost him. West Virginia could have walked into the end zone. Staley on to try a 38-yard field goal. Missed from 49 earlier. Here's the kick. It is up and it is right down the middle. And so West Virginia on the board. Evan Staley, the 38-yard field goal. And the Mountaineers have cut into the lead. It's James Madison 7, West Virginia 3. Last time James Madison had the ball, they go seven plays, 80 yards. It took two minutes and 38 seconds. Steady diet of running. That's Austin Douglas, the freshman. A couple of big runs for him. Solomon Van Horst had some runs. They were able to complete some passes. Ben DiNucci, four for four for DiNucci 58 yards Polk thus far. Nice move. Nifty move by Polk and then Van Horst with a touchdown run. So an impressive drive by James Madison. Very impressive drive by the Dukes. And again, they're going to continue to run that football until that West Virginia defense can prove that they can slow these running backs down. West Virginia switched their defense out from last year from a 3-3-5 stack to a 4-2 this season. Uh, they have five defensive backs normally in a game at one time. So one of those guys are going to have to creep down into the box to, to help out and run support just to get an extra guy to, to slow that attack down. Polk calls for the fair catch in the end zone, so the ball comes out to the 20-yard line. Interesting, the old days they took a knee, right, and now they wave the hand over the head. Yep. You can do that anywhere as long as you catch the ball and the kickoff return and the ball is spotted there. So the ball comes out to the 25 yard line. Now easy Rob, those days were my days. So <laughs> let's not go too far here, all right? 
Well, they did have face masks in my day, but. <laughs> Danucci fakes and keeps on the option, and Ben Danucci slides out across the 30, close to the 35 yard line. Looks like he'll be called down at the 33, so a pickup of eight. You know, this talks about how athletic Ben Danucci is. He's, he's very underrated uh, by his athleticism as a quarterback, but right there we saw he does have the capability of tucking that ball and getting downfield. That play alone will keep West Virginia honest on his bootlegs and expecting to run up the middle. Here's the pass complete out to Van Horse and Van Horse on the short completion. Danucci now five for five. They pick up the first down. Danucci ran for 433 yards and nine touchdowns a season ago. You know, one thing Kurt Zignetti said about Danucci is uh, people don't give him the respect in terms of athleticism uh, that he possesses. They think he's just a pocket passer, but he can tuck that ball and run with the football. Again, I talked about last season, had 12 rushing touchdowns, or excuse me, nine rushing touchdowns a season ago. And Danucci will keep again, and Danucci tracked down by Josh Chandler, but picks up eight yards on first down. This is another element to James Madison's offense. And this is just a simple backside read so you have the running back come across the formation and Danucci's eyes are just on that backside. If you get a defensive end crashing down from West Virginia, he's going to pull that and there's no defenders in front of him from West Virginia. So every single time they run that, he's picking up about six to seven yards. There's Brown in motion, but they'll give to Juwan Hamilton, the UCF transfer, and Hamilton picks up six yards. You talked about the deep stable of running backs. Think about this. Hamilton was the starting running back at the beginning of the season as a freshman for that UCF team that went 13-0. And now he's transferring and he's he's the third running back fourth running back We've seen in the game here for James Madison again that that speaks directly to the talent that James Madison has Offensively and defensively they're loaded on both sides. This is not your normal FCS opponent and This is Danucci once again Boy, they wanted a flag for targeting on that play James Madison sideline unhappy as Danucci slides down and picks up five on first down. You know, one thing I like about James Madison, what they're doing on offense right now, they're in a groove, they're in a rhythm. They're able to pick up positive yardage every single play. Everything seems to be flowing right now. West Virginia doesn't have an idea as to what's going on. Danucci's keeping the ball, they're handing off to the running backs. They're able to squeak in a quick pass out to the outside. They're in good shape. Here's Douglas, finds a seam off the right side, and the freshman Crosses the 40, gets down to the 37, picks up another first down for James Madison. You know, these long drives by James Madison are playing directly into their hands. For one, it's working against the clock. They're, they're chewing up a ton of clock. Even if they don't get a touchdown on this drive, they were able to utilize that clock in their advantage, and they're possessing the football. So right now, they're in fully control of what's going on at the line of scrimmage. They're able to move this West Virginia defensive line back and, and have the room to throw the, and run the football. He's a give to Douglas. Douglas tries to bounce it outside in big trouble. Now reverses field. And Douglas with a flag coming in late. A huge loss all the way back to the 47-yard line. Now the kind of thing you sometimes worry about with freshman running backs. Yeah, you have to be smart back there. You can't dance around. You have to get north and south, put your foot in the ground. Those running back coaches will teach you. If it's not there, don't improvise. Try to get upfield. It looks like we're going to have a holding penalty as well. Holding. holding. Offense, Offense, number 79. That penalty is declined. Second down. Raymond Gillespie. Yep. Call on him, Gillespie and Bethea. The two left tackles, each starting games last year. So those two have... 22 starts between them and only one of them is starting. So again, that we talk about the depth on James Madison. They have it on the offensive line as well. Here's Danucci on the keep. Straight up the middle. Danucci all kinds of room and gets down to the 25-yard line. First down on a 22-yard run by Ben Danucci. Well, right after West Virginia had their biggest defensive play of this football game, Danucci comes right back. They show quarterback draw. You get the defenders from West Virginia flying out of there. 
and it leaves that that tunnel right up the middle. And again, Danucci's athleticism is, is shining bright right now. I made a living off of this play, and I know what it's like. You see that tunnel open up, and you just want to get north and south. Had Ben Danucci been just a little bit faster, he could have picked up more yards. Great play by him. And here's Van Horst, little stutter step. He has plenty of room. He has 10 yards. He has another first down for the Dukes. Variety. West Virginia's defense off balance right now. Kurt Signetti is, has done a good job of having this team prepared to play West Virginia's football team. There was a lot of research done in the offseason trying to watch Troy uh, defensive tapes just to get a read as to what's gonna, uh, what they were going to see today. And right now, this game plan is very solid from James Madison. And this time, Ben Horse is wrapped up immediately as Dante Stills, the outstanding sophomore freshman All-American a year ago from ESPN and in the athletic able to step step in and make the stop. Yeah, Dante Seals, the younger brother of Darius Seals. Both of these guys are a force in the middle. He's going to have to continue to develop. Just a sophomore had a, had a pretty good taste of what it was like last year, but they're going to count on him just a little bit more playing behind Reese Donahue. Second and 11. Panucci back on the draw, looking, trying to pick his way forward, and is able to squirm through and pick up a couple looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage he might have gotten three down to the 13 call it two and we'll make it third and nine yeah, I think this was another design quarterback draw by Josh Chandler 35 the wheel linebacker for West Virginia able to make that stop right now I see a, a, a lack of energy from the West Virginia defense I'm not sure if they're starting to get one down fatigued or what the case is but James Madison is is handling everything offensively that their game plan is calling for. Third and nine. Danucci gives. This is Van Horst up the middle, and Van Horst down to the 10 yard line. Stop there. And wait to see if Ethan Ratke and the field goal team comes on, and they will be sent out by Kurt Signetti. Another impressive, time consuming drive by James Madison. Hey, you're exactly right. Again, I, I, I mentioned it earlier in this series. Even if they do not get into the end zone, that drive benefits James Madison more than it does West Virginia. They chewed up a ton of clock, and right now they have an opportunity to go up 10-3. 27-yard field goal attempt for Ethan Ratke. And Ratke has it blocked. Well, the Mountaineers have come up with some big plays on special teams. They created the turnover off the punt. And now it's Darius Stills who comes up the middle and blocks the Radke field goal attempt. So West Virginia, a couple of huge plays on special teams. Mountaineers keeping James Madison off the board. Well, something coach Neil Brown tells his team is how you do anything is how you do everything. And that message is resonating. Senior defensive lineman Reese Dunnehue said his teammates now make it a point to clean the weight room uh, to make sure their lockers are clean. He said if you can't keep a multi-million dollar facility clean, how can you be disciplined enough for an assignment on fourth and one? He said it creates a culture of trust between coaches and players. And that certainly showed on that discipline on that last drive. Guys. Meg, thanks very much. First block kick for the Mountaineers since Avery Williams against Iowa State back in 2013. And now we have whistles, flags. It looks like illegal movement. False start. Offense, number 72, five yard penalty. Still first down. Kelby Wickline, the right tackle. As offensive linemen have seen three different offensive line coaches, including Joe Wickline, Kelby's uh, dad, who has moved on. So a lot of continuity issues that you hope are going to get better for the Mountaineers over the years. There's only so much a staff can do in a short period of time. Right, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Discipline is discipline. You should be able to hold your water as an offensive lineman on first down. There's Sinkfield, and Sinkfield on the short pass from Kendall crosses the 20, gets out to the 21 yard line. So a pickup of six brings up a second and nine. You know, that speaks to exactly what Meg talked about about discipline and being able to do the different or do things the right way. On a first and 10, you should not be in a, in a position to jump off sides or uh, full start for that fact. Because for West Virginia, they're not that talented offensively as, as it is already. So you can't hurt yourself 
and, and try to climb out of hole. So West Virginia has to do everything in their power to keep it clean. Take the pet away. Kemba rolling out. Has a man open. It's Simmons. Simmons able to gather his feet, stay in bounds, and sprint up the sideline to the 36. It's a first down for West Virginia. I think you continue to feed T.J. Simmons the football. Again, I'm high on this guy. He's, he's going to have a big year for this West Virginia offense. But they have to continue to, to work that running game as well, try to work some play action. There's a stable of backs on West Virginia's team that they should be utilizing, utilizing these guys good enough to be able to suck those linebackers in from James Madison and open up play action down the field. Some late substitutions, trips to the left, head away the running back to the right of Kendall. Approaching the five minute mark as Kendall drops back, looks, floats, and under pressure, Rondell Carter got there and made him throw it quickly, incomplete. Again, you don't get home to the quarterback, you don't get a sack, but you also are going to let that quarterback know, I'll be in your face, and that causes just a little bit of disruption to make that ball sail by Kendall. Carter, the Rutgers transfer, seven and a half sacks a year ago. He is one of several NFL prospects on the defensive side for James Madison. There's Rondell Carter. I mean, you hear this guy talk. It's just inspiring to listen to him. He talks about how much he cherishes the game and, again, just trying to make every second count. Here's the flip to James. James in trouble. Now tries to cut back the other way. Oh, he is hammered down. It was turned inside. And then Adib Atariwa come up, comes up to make the stop. Big hit by Atariwa. Yeah, that's Atariwa. And Sam James will learn this. Going back against the grain when the flow is coming in your direction, you better keep your head on a swivel. Again, I understand he's athletic, he's fast, but going against the grain, those purple... The guys in purple pants are coming from James Madison, so it's important to keep your head on the swivel. Make sure you understand where those defenders are. They'll come up and hit you. Same time and did not reset. That penalty is declined. Third down. And there was a penalty. Again, illegal movement before the play. The player's not set. We talked about Wayne Davis. He's the guy who turned that in for Atari Wad to make the stop. Again. Guys that have some pedigree. He was a Virginia Gatorade and Associated Press Player of the Year in the state of Virginia. Ohio State recruit. Was it Ohio State then transferred to James Madison? So they've got some talent on this team. Kendall back. Steps up. Throws incomplete intended for Simmons. And it will be James Madison football. Well, you would think, of course, a couple of special teams plays by West Virginia. But they forced the punting situation here for West Virginia. Yeah, there's no uh, continuity on this West Virginia offense right now. You can see some frustration on Kendall's face. It's starting to sink in that things aren't clicking for this offense. So right now you're in a position to get ready to, to go into halftime. You, you try to do what you can, uh, possibly get some points on the board before halftime. But you get to sit down and talk about some things, make some adjustments, and hopefully change the pace of what this offense is looking like. Here's the kick by Grout, and then it goes all the way across the field. And X3 low, it looks like, is the guy who came up with it. Will down it for the Mountaineers at the 34 yard line. Good field position for James Madison. A chance to put one more score on the board with 437 remaining in the first half. Now, the Mountaineers have created a couple of breaks. Some turnovers, but James Madison has been up to the challenge. The Van Horse nine-yard touchdown run. Staley with a field goal, but it is the Dukes who are up seven to three, looking to pull off the upset. Blocked field goal attempt by Darius Stills, looming large right now, but James Madison the ball at the 33-yard line and an opportunity to put more points on the board before the half. Here's Danucci. And Danucci fires first incompletion of the game. Hakeem Bailey bats it away from Kendall Dean. That was a good play by Hakeem Bailey. Tighter coverage than what we saw earlier in the game on those first couple of series. But able to get a hand in there and knock that ball out. You know, listen to, to the coaching staff. They talk about his athleticism and, you know, how he can develop into a good player. He has one year to do it, and this, this is going to be it. He has to make it count. Danucci back looking fires complete out to the 40 yard line. That was Polk on the receiving end, a pickup of seven. 
Keith Washington makes the stop for the Mountaineers. Now again, I like the mix that James Madison has given this defense from West Virginia. We've talked about the running backs from James Madison and how they're able to carry a lot of this load, but these receivers on the outside and the play calling all mixed together, it's doing a good job of keeping West Virginia off balance. Danucci inside pass. And it is broken up X3 low on the short reception. Technically a pass to Douglas, but X3 low right there, closed on it, no gain. And James Madison will be forced to punt. And that was a fantastic play by 17 low. He was able to break down that play and understand exactly what was coming. He just waited right until the, the right second to go ahead and converge on the running back. Very athletic play by him. Mario Kelly, the boot. And Sinkfield calls for the fair catch at the 20 yard line. So 316 remains in the first half of play, and West Virginia will take over with the ball at the 20 yard line. There's a flag on the play, though. Let's see what this is going to be. It's back at the 45 yard line of James Madison. During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 34, 10 yard penalty. First down. So that will push the Mountaineers back to their own 10 yard line, which is where they'll take over with 316 remaining, trailing 7 3. All day on ATT Sportsnet. Now, an interesting decision here for Coach Neil Brown. You have a quarterback who's essentially he's played in one game, hasn't played in a game really in three years, essentially making his debut pinned deep against a very good defense with some ball hawks defensively. Calls here will be interesting. And the give to McCoy and McCoy. That was what you suspected as he picks up five. Some safe calls here, at least to get out of the shadow of your own end zone. Yeah, that's a really good point. You want to keep things pretty safe here, pretty vanilla. For one, James Madison has been shown that they can get to the quarterback once they decide to bring pressure. And then for West Virginia's offense, they haven't given anything to Neil Brown or Matt Moore, the offensive coordinator, to give them confidence to, to open things up. Now, they might take a shot down the field just to keep this defense honest, but they'll keep it pretty simple. Kendall back throws over the middle, intended for Sean Ryan, incomplete. Rashard Robinson there in coverage is able to bat it away. Yeah, Rashad Robinson is another one from James Madison. A preseason All-American. He was a playmaker two years ago. He set out last year with an injury, but he was a great addition to this James Madison defense coming back off of that injury, and uh, he's poised for a big year as well. You talk about 20 of 22 starters coming back, but really with Robinson coming back, replacing Jimmy Moreland, who's with the Redskins, a seventh-round pick. That's <laughs> that's almost like replacing one starter with another. Yep. Push in motion. Third and five, Kendall back, looking, throws out for Bush, and cannot find his diminutive receiver, goes incomplete, and now West Virginia will be forced to punt it away, and you would think this means good field position and another chance for Ben DiNucci and the Dukes offense. Yep, it's going to be another opportunity for the Dukes to get some points on the board, but back to the West Virginia offense, those are simple play calls that you should be able to execute without problem. Bush was open in the flat for Kendall. He has to relax and just go ahead and deliver and let, let the athlete take over from that point. But once you get that ball into Bush's hands, there's no telling what he can do. He's a shifty player in the open field. It'll, it'll start to come to him. Mentioned that Amos is a very dangerous punt returner. They have not really booted him the ball. He'll get an opportunity here. That is 47. Makes the first man miss. And West Virginia there defensively to wrestle him down at the 47-yard line. And it looks like a flag down as well. Right on number 64. Rex so excellent field position for now. During the kick, holding number 11 of the return team, 10 yard penalty, first down, James Madison. Now Bryce McGinley called for the hold. Back up defensive end, playing special teams. This ball is being marched way back now to the 39 yard line as we take a look at the FCS pole. Not sure why they have brought it all the way back to the 39, but they have. North Dakota State, of course, a perennial power. There's James Madison, Eastern Washington, South Dakota State, and UC Davis. And 
where James Madison of their last four FCS games they've won two of them. Well, this is a team that's not surprised to be leading in this game. Austin Douglas off the left side. The freshman has a little bit of room and then that room is closed off a pickup of about three on that first down run. Yeah, trying to get Douglas out on the edge, utilize some of his speed, see if West Virginia is able to sail off the edge. But they'll continue to get these athletes mixed in from James Madison. They want to get the ball into their top athletes' hands, and right now their running backs are getting the job done. We almost forgot about Douglas, but he's another one in the mix. The speedster of the group. You give him four yards on that run. Now Danucci's pass batted and incomplete. Boy, Norwood changed directions and couldn't get there before the ball fluttered to the Mountaineer turf field. That was a nice, nice play by Josh Chandler. Able to get his hands up, very athletic play by him. We, again, talked to, to him in the meeting, and he talked about how excited he was to get out here and just prove people wrong, prove people that he's able to play on this level. So far, he's doing a good job of doing just that. Third and long, Danucci back, looking, throws, batted. Tay Stills, who got the hand up, incomplete. We have seen a lot of three and outs here quickly towards the end of this first half. Yeah, things are starting to break down a little bit, but again, you can't take anything away from this West Virginia defense. Doing a great job of, of deflecting some balls, and that is a very athletic play by Stills coming off the edge, 55. A lot of defensive linemen aren't able to make that play because they're so locked in into the quarterback or running back. It's one thing to be able to see what's going on in front of you and see those eyes from the quarterback and get your hands up. Very good play by him. And here's the kick. Sinkfield will come up and call the fair catch inside the 20 yard line. And once again, now minute 40 remaining. One thing, too, we have not seen out of James Madison. We've seen a lot of short passes. You wonder if maybe they're trying to set up that Mountaineer secondary for something down the field a little later in the game because they have not taken a shot at all. We saw West Virginia take one shot earlier, the pass to Wheaton that was slightly overthrown, but. Um, it's been very close to the vest for both teams here offensively. You're right, and, and that is a setup for later in the game because you've been seeing so many short passes. The running game is going for James Madison. It tends to suck everyone in, and right before you know it, you hit a play action deep downfield just because everyone has to respect that run game. Here's the give to McCoy off the right side. Nothing doing. Gets to the 20 on a pickup of two. You know, you get a fill in the stadium right now. Everyone is on the edge of the seat. They want to see what's going to happen. It's very quiet. I haven't heard Mountaineer Field this quiet in a very long time. But it's a new era, and we've talked about it. It's going to take time for things to develop. It's going to take time for this offensive unit to gel. We give to McCoy in the delay. Dimitri Holloway, the All-American, read that immediately. Leading tackler. A year ago for James Madison comes up and makes the stop and now the Dukes want to call a timeout. One oh five remaining. And Austin Kendall as the Dukes charge their first timeout the latest in a long line of transfer quarterbacks who have come to West Virginia and started Kendall again we talked about. Him being behind Mayfield and Murray at Oklahoma. Will Greer transferred in from Florida. We know what he did. Great success onto the NFL for him. Skyler Howard back in 2014 decided to call Morgantown his home. Clint Trickett, Florida State transfer back in 2013. You, of course, went the traditional route. Went down from the Pittsburgh area. Took the traditional route and uh, made a career of it. It felt great in the process, I'll tell you that. But West Virginia has done a good job of, of getting these transfers in, developing them just enough to be able to uh, lead this offense. And Will Greer being the best of them, he was uh, a land for West Virginia that was uh, God sent for this, for this football team. And he did a lot of great things for this university. Kendall back now, looking, throws underneath, complete. This is James looking for some room, and James will not pick up the first down. The Dukes swarm him under at the 24-yard line. Still letting this clock roll here. This is interesting. And now they call the timeout with 50 seconds remaining in the first half. You'd have thought that would be sort of an instantaneous call after they stop him in the field of play. 
50 seconds remaining. One timeout left for James Madison. Again, we've talked about it before. D'Angelo Amos, the 10 yard uh, penalty on the hold on the punt before, but this is a guy very, very capable. Four career punt return touchdowns. He's trying to get into the end zone every single time he touches that football. And you can see his explosiveness. Is he, if he does have room, he's going to try to make a guy miss. And that's what it's about as a punt returner. You try to make that one guy miss initially, get north and south, put that foot in the ground, and try to make your way to the end zone. But West Virginia at some point is going to have to continue to defend this guy. And right now, this is going to be the next challenge for them. Josh Drowden, who was the punter at LSU, a graduate transfer, kind of a late enrollee, though. So wasn't doing a whole lot of kicking. And this is beginning to be a shorter one angling over to the far side of the field and down at the 39 yard line. That is where James Madison will take over 41 seconds remaining. One timeout. Figured they have to get to about the 30 yard line or so. So about 30 yards to give Ratke a reasonable chance at a field goal. And uh, also, you can go that route as well. But I think right now in the position that James Madison is in, I don't see them doing anything out of the ordinary to try to take some shots down the field. Now, they just might just to get into that range, as you mentioned. But right now, I think you're happy where you are, where if you're James Madison and you want to try to get into halftime safely. Van Horst, the lone running back. Danucci will give to Van Horst off the left side, and Van Horst bangs into his own man, but crosses the 45 out to the 46. Now James Madison looking to hurry up and get to the line of scrimmage. Yep, showing some tempo, getting right back to the line of scrimmage. Set quickly. Give to Van Horst again. Van Horst is going to be close to, but apparently just short of first down yardage. 15 seconds remaining in the first half. See whether James Madison will try to run one more play or call it a half. It looks like they're going to call it a half. Certainly not stunned by this score. Kurt Signetti's team, ranked number two in the FCS ranks. We've talked about two of their last four FBS opponents. They have defeated NC State, the team that went nine and three a year ago. They played them down to the very wire in that game before. The Wolfpack won 24 to 13. So this is not a team that thinks they shouldn't be in here and shouldn't be in this game as we head downstairs now to Meg Bulger and Neil Brown. Coach, able to put together a couple of defensive stands before the half. How important is that to build on that at half and what adjustments need made? Well, we got to stop the run defensively. We're letting them kind of slow. We're, we're dying a slow death right now defensively. We've got turnovers and offensively we got to do something with those. Um, Offensively, just just bad football, honestly. I mean, I can sit here and talk a long time, but it's just bad football. So many guys, first time playing, and it looks like it. We've got to get them calmed down and back making routine plays offensively. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Rob? Megan, Coach Brown, our thanks, and that's kind of the way you saw it as well, Rashid, that the offense needs to calm down, get some plays, do what their coach to do. And right now, the James Madison University Dukes with a 7-3 lead at the half. We're going to be talking to Shane Lyons when we resume. The Neil Brown era beginning for the West Virginia Mountaineers, the Kurt Signetti era beginning for James Madison, the Dukes, the second ranked team in FCS. This is no surprise, this score. A lot of folks expecting James Madison to give West Virginia a difficult game. Some even predicting that the FCS team would come into Morgantown and upset the Mountaineers. And right now, a nine yard touchdown run from Van Horse for James Madison, a 38 yard field goal from Evan Staley. And we are at 7 3, James Madison. The lead at the half. Neil Brown had an opportunity to dive right into West Virginia life. He has talked about his love for Morgantown, West Virginia, and for the Mountaineers program, also for the state of West Virginia, and had an opportunity to go whitewater rafting in the New River Gorge.
Uh, Neil Brown, his Mountaineers in his first game, trailing right now at the half, 7-3 against James Madison. We'll be back with more on the halftime show right after this. Second half just about ready to get underway. James Madison leading West Virginia 7-3. The Mountaineers will receive the opening kickoff here in the second half, a chance to put some points on the board. But in the meantime, the Colonial Athletic Association, one of the top conferences in FCS, five ranked teams heading into the season, including number two, James Madison. They've also had plenty of success against the FBS. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we mentioned how tough of an opponent that James Madison is going to be for West Virginia coming in. This is not your typical FCS opponent. You're not going to cruise to a victory here. James Madison still in, controlling his football game for the most part. It's almost like the game is flip-flop. West Virginia is the, the underdog in this situation with the inexperience, with the young guys stepping in, uh, a lot of new guys out on the field for the first time, and JMU being the experienced group. Camden Wise getting set to kick off and see if they can make some adjustments at the half. Neil Brown said, just make the plays we can make. They're there. We need to calm down a little bit offensively, defensively playing better as that first half went along. And it's going to be James. He'll take the ball at the four-yard line. And James is wrapped up and taken down at the 18-yard line. So not great field position for the Mountaineers to begin. As Austin Kendall will come out, beat out Jack Allison in a battle for that starting quarterback job. They have an interesting situation. Allison, a Miami transfer, started the bowl game last year after Will Greer opted to skip it. We've seen more and more of that. Players deciding to skip the bowl games and get themselves ready for the NFL. And then Jarrett Dagey, a guy who probably will redshirt, but led the Mac in passing yardage and joined the program late in the summer. Finally got the release uh, on the transfer. So an interesting position, certainly, for the Mountaineers. Yeah, definitely played out pretty uh, unique from that quarterback per perspective. But Dagey being the most experienced is the one not behind the helm. Oh, here's Tevin Bush and Bush. I look like James Madison thought he might step out of bounds. They get a late block. He turns it up the field and gets all the way down to the 37-yard line of James Madison. And that's the play that West Virginia needed to get that spark. I talked about how Kendall missed Bush earlier in the flat. Right there, he was able to hit him on that crossing route. I talked about how unique Bush is in the open field and able to make guys miss. He's a speedy guy. Get the ball into his hands and let his athleticism take over. Good execution. Oh, they're going to mark him down at the 41 after a 41-yard gain. Here's Kendall. Will loft out. Sean Ryan into and out of his hands. As Rashad Robinson there in coverage. Sean Ryan to Temple transfer still looking for his first reception. That would have been a very good play had Sean Ryan been able to hold on to that one. That's just a simple back shoulder throw. And it's not as easy as it may look on television. It takes a lot of timing and, and focus on that by that receiver to be able to pull that in. That was a good job by Robinson. Not losing track of where the football was at. He was able to get a hand in there and rip it out. Late substitutions is Bush and the tight end Michael Laughlin. Check back in. McCoy the lone setback. Here's Bush in motion. And they'll give it to Bush. And Bush hit by Carter, able to get free, looking to get to the edge. And he is wrapped up and brought down Wayne Davis and Landon Word there on the stop. Rondale Carter just so disruptive. Although he didn't make the tackle, he was in position. But again, West Virginia trying to get some new life started in this offense. And Bush is the guy who, who can get it started. He's going to be able to utilize that, that speed, get to the edge. But again, Carter in position to just cause some chaos and disruption. We've seen on crossing patterns, reverses other plays, just a little bit disruption of the timing of the play can result in a big loss. Here's Kendall back, looking, throwing underneath, complete. And this is Ryan with his first reception as a Mountaineer down to the 23-yard line and a first down for West Virginia. What a great addition to the West Virginia offense, Sean Ryan. They waited all the way down to the wire to see if he was going to be granted his waiver to be immediately eligible. He practiced through fall camp. And this is, a, again, a great addition coming up with a big catch right here. This West Virginia offense already looks completely new. Kendall fakes, throws, and just over the outstretched hands of Sam James. Rashad Robinson once again in very good coverage for James Madison. Yep, that's the preseason All-American. We talked about 
Robinson B and B guy in the on the back end for James Madison. But you can see West Virginia trying to do a little something different than what they did in the first half. Take some shots down the field, open it up through the air. And I think you have to continue to do that as this football game goes along and as the season plays out because that's where you build your chemistry. That's where these receivers are going to get used to the type of ball that Kendall throws, the air, the trajectory of his throws. Javani Haskins has checked in at the tight end position. McCoy remains the lone setback. And a whistle before the snap and looks like a legal procedure against West Virginia. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 13, five-yard penalty, second down. That's Sam James, and boy, you hate those momentum robbers. That's exactly right, Rob. It, you do so many good things, and then you have something just foolish like that. It, it, it puts you back five yards, and now you're looking at a second and 15. And for this West Virginia offense, this is not a position that they need to be in. They, they are already finding it hard to gain positive yardage. It is converted to third and 12, but you're right. This, again, with a young, inexperienced team, maybe more inexperienced than young. A lot of new faces trying to gel together. The quarterback, Kendall, the transfers at receiver and Ryan and Campbell. Thank you for resetting the clock to 13-14. The previous play was an incomplete pass. So trying to make sure the clock is set accurately. And remain at 13 14 until the snap to Austin Kendall, the quarterback. Kendall back. Kendall steps up and Kendall looking, and down he'll go. Rondell Carter able to corral him after a pickup of about a yard, and it'll bring up another third and long. Third and long is not a position you would like to be in if you're Austin Kendall or this West Virginia offense. They've already had some issues trying to move the football and get positive yardage. This is not a down and distance where West Virginia has proven that they can execute and pick up the first down and convert on this. Haskins is checked back into the right. Locked it. End zone. Touchdown Mountaineers. It's George Campbell. His first reception for West Virginia goes for a touchdown. It doesn't get any better than that. First reception for a touchdown. George Campbell, another transfer from Florida State, who is in addition to this wide receiver room, showing that he has the ability to get behind defenders. Great timing, great touch by Kendall right there. And that's the chemistry that these receivers and the quarterback has to develop. Very good execution. Touchdown, West Virginia. Has the speed, the size. The number 26 player in the country, number three wide receiver in the country, coming out of high school, five-star recruit. Maybe finding a home here in Morgantown. 28 yards to hook up. Austin Kendall, the transfer from Oklahoma to the transfer from Florida State. The Mountaineers, their first lead of the season. Well, outside of Pushkar Stadium sits a large piece of coal that coaches and players will touch before each game. In an effort to acknowledge the state's coal industry, Coach Neil Brown took his team to Lear Mine in Grafton County this summer. For Brown, it was about the team understanding the importance of that industry for the entire state. Many players took to social media and described it as a humbling experience that really puts things in per perspective. Senior Keith Washington told me, we were in awe of what these guys were doing and all the miners wanted to talk about was watching us on Saturday. Rob? Yeah, it was a great story, Meg. Thanks very much. And uh, the guys, I think, really getting an appreciation for the backbone and heart of the state. And coal mining, obviously, a big part of it. Yep, part of the culture, and it's important for the guys to go down there and see what it's all about. Fair catch called for by Polk. And so, once again, James Madison will have the ball at the 25-yard line. Yeah, but just to go back to what Meg talked about, that's important for team chemistry. That's important for bonding your guys together. As I talked about in the open, trying to get that buy-in from the players, trying to get them to believe. So I thought that was a great thing by Coach Brown, not only as a team chemistry and, and uh, team relationship building, but understanding the culture of the state as well. Washington Indian looking to see if they can carry some momentum here defensively as Juwan Hamilton gets the call, and Hamilton will pick up six in that first down run out to the 31-yard line. 
Again, West Virginia, or excuse me, James Madison sticking to their original plan, trying to continue to test this West Virginia defense in that A-gap. West Virginia has done a, a better job, I should say, at slowing them down, but play action is coming pretty soon. There's Hamilton try to sweep out to the right, squares his shoulders, gets out close to first down yard. It's going to be about a yard short. Three-yard pickup will bring up a third and one. You know, I think it's important for the eyes of the, of the second level to really focus in on what's happening in the backfield. It's just a matter of time before Ben DiNucci rides that fake. We've seen it from week to week in college football. You suck those linebackers in and you try to get downfield on a deep play action ball. And there's a give to Hamilton and Hamilton hit originally, but he's able to squirt forward. Josh Chandler got the penetration, but no help coming from the inside and Hamilton able to ride forward to pick up the first down. You know, this James Madison offense is so uh, slow and methodical. We haven't seen a bunch of tempo. They have showed some sense of urgency in getting back to the line of scrimmage. But right now, they're not in a rush. They're not in a, in a panic mode. They're, they're continuing to let this offense play out. Kinucci looking and has Dean. Dean streaking clear. And Dean inside the 40-yard line. And that will be wrestled down. Keith Washington in the stop, but not before Dean picks up big yardage down to the 36 of the Mountaineers. It was great execution by Danucci and Kendall Dean. Talked about Dean a little bit earlier. Started 13 games as a redshirt freshman last season. But just able to work side inside of Hakeem Bailey. Jay Obese now will cut back across the grain and stretch forward to the 31 yard line. So following the 29 yard pickup, five more for a Jay Obese. There's so many things to try to key on with this James Madison offense. If you're a defensive player for West Virginia, you don't you don't know what's coming next. You have a Jay Obese coming back with a quick hitter right up the middle. To people at home, it might not seem like five yards is a lot, but if you are able to get positive yardage, you set yourself up again on third down to wear some manageable down for you. Second down here. Danucci back looking. Danucci is hit and dropped for the sack. It's Jeffrey Pooler who was able to come in. I beg your pardon, that's Taj Alston. The transfer from East Carolina went to Community College route and comes up with his first sack as a Mountaineer. Yeah, Taj Alston is a, uh, a an athletic defensive lineman for West Virginia. They like to utilize his speed coming off the edge, and he's a defensive end, so he can beat some of these tackles and guards with just pure speed off the edge. A little bit of technique right there. Way to get home by Austin. Very good play. Wondarius Qualls also in there in the stop along with Alston. Now third and long. Van Horsen at running back. James Madison two for six on third down. Danucci back, steps up, trouble, looks, now has some room. Danucci uses the legs, crosses the first down marker, gets down close to the 20-yard line and picks up a first down for the Dukes. And those are the plays Kurt Signetti talked about. He doesn't get the respect uh, from an athletic standpoint of making plays with his feet. Things break down. It's just a quick shuffle, one-two, make a guy miss, and he's able to use the speed that he has to get upfield right there, picking up positive yardage, very valuable yards, and a first down. And I felt like a momentum shifter there after the sack. West Virginia trying to get off the field instead of first down on a third and 12-yard scamper. Now the reverse. Across the 20-yard line and good yardage down inside the 15 to about the 12 for Brandon Polk. Pickup of nine yards. Now beginning to open the playbook a little bit, seeing the reverse, seeing some passes a little further down the field. Maybe just getting West Virginia a little bit off balance here defensively. That's right. They're, they're utilizing Polk. I talked about him. He, he was a former track guy in high school. So he can turn it on and get some positive yards on the edge. Hamilton stutter steps, gets down to the 10 yard line, picks up a first down for James Madison. You know, they're attacking you from a lot of different ways. Again, it's, it's very hard to be able to key on uh, just one thing if you're a defender from West Virginia. The variety from James Madison has been great getting guys utilized, as you talked about. A reverse with Polk right there. They pull around the tight end, get a kick out block. It's hard to just key on just one particular thing with this offense. Danucci keeps, and Danucci 
And when they get inside the 10, Norwood on the tackle, he picked up about three down to the seven. This is a goal-to-go situation. James Madison cannot pick up a first down. This is going to be a very key drive right here to finish out for West Virginia. They're going to have to buckle down, really come together, and try to make a stop. Austin Douglas, the freshman, has checked in. Ball to seven, second and goal. Brown in motion again. Kinucci back. Looking. Kinucci in trouble and down he goes. Sacked by Reuben Jones, the Michigan transfer, who comes up with his first sack as a Mountaineer. We'll see it here again. Great backside pressure. Ben Denucci being a right-handed quarterback. Not seeing that or feeling the pressure coming from the backside. Great job by Jones. Able to fight off his defender, his offender, excuse me, and get home to the quarterback. Very good play by him. Third and goal from back of the 12-yard line. Benucci back, looking, fires, and batted away. Incomplete, Akeem Bailey stepped in front and was able to get a hand on it. Intended for the tight end, Stapleton. Incomplete and a field goal opportunity here for the Dukes. That was a great job by Hakeem Bailey, understanding that there's no outside threat. There's no number one out there, so he can kind of fall in. He was able to help out in coverage, and right at the last second, get that right hand in there to knock that ball out, which would have been a touchdown. Had the receiver came up with the catch. Very athletic play by Bailey. Ethan Radke will try a 29-yard field goal. His last field goal attempt was blocked. Set a single-season record with 17 field goals a season ago. And this kick by Radke is up, and it's good, and we are tied. So West Virginia takes their first possession, scores a touchdown. James Madison kicks a field goal, and we're knotted at 10. We're happy to welcome the West Virginia football seniors into our AT&T Sportsnet studio. I think you saw Dan Potash, our producer, Roger Lenhart, Michael McKenna. There's Matt Williams right there, center stage, our esteemed director, helping to lead the charger and then over to see the Steelers facility as West Virginia, the seniors coming up and visiting the great city of Pittsburgh under first-year head coach Neil Brown, who's Mountaineers in a dogfight, as we expected they would be, tied at 10 with the James Madison University Dukes. And here's the kickoff. They'll come down to James at the five-yard line. James looking to get to the edge now. Gets across the 20 and is rocketed down to the 21-yard line. When the Mountaineers come out with a strong opening drive to begin this second half. Yep. Tevin Bush gets involved in the action, and the Mountaineers able to march down the field and score the touchdown. It was George Campbell to transfer from Florida State, but Kendall able to get things going, operating pretty efficiently. And we talked about Campbell, the addition to him in that receiver room from Florida State. Great addition. He's shown some athleticism and glimpses. They'll be able to count on this guy as this season goes along. 28-yarder from Kendall to Campbell. We saw Sean Ryan getting his first reception as well, so... Some of the new guys, including Kendall, getting their feet wet on that drive a little bit. And there's a pass complete out to Bryce Wheaton. Wheaton's got a great story. A lot of uh, bloodlines here for West Virginia's grandfather, Garrett Ford Sr., his uncle, Garrett Ford Jr., both stand out running backs at West Virginia. Great bloodlines there as uh, Bryce Wheaton gets his first reception as a member of the Mountaineers. So a lot of first being checked off. Yep, and right before that first half, I talked about how Austin Kendall was going to start to settle down a little bit and look a little more comfortable once that halftime period ended. He's showing just that. He's able to complete some balls. He's, he's starting to just get into a flow of things. He's starting to come to him. Petaway doing a nice job there, showing his strength as Amos came up there, hit him in the hole, but Petaway able to roll forward and pick up first down yardage. Yeah, Amos is the free safety. He's down in the box, deep in the box in run support. I talked about Petaway not being a small guy. That was a solid tackle. Here's Kendall looking. Has time. Now we'll tuck it. And Kendall is banged down after a short game. Got out to maybe the 34-yard line. 
so I think it's, Robinson up at the stop. I think it's clear that Kendall is not necessarily a runner. He's going to look to try to push the ball down the field, but if he feels pressure, his eyes are still downfield. He may take off here and there, but for the most part, he's 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 not a runner outside of the pocket. Things breaks down. He's he's going to try to get that ball out of his hands. Second and eight. Kendall throws quickly, complete, and it's Wheaton who lost. A bigger uh, Randy Fields who lost his footing as he crossed the 40, got out to the 41 yard line. Kendall had the same exact look, and it was Tevin Bush out in the flat that he missed in the first half. Came back, was able to execute on this play. Again, just talks to the to the factor that how much more comfortable he's getting with the flow of this football game. And that's a good thing to see if you're Neil Brown or Matt Moore because they continue to get confidence and they're able to open things up to see that their senior, or excuse me, junior quarterback is, is getting into the flow of the game. So this is going to benefit this whole offense. Now under center here for Kendall. Mountaineers 4 of 11 on third down. Here's the give. Petaway off the left side. Hit in the backfield and now very, very close to the first down sticks. Oh, and they say it's going to be enough at the 43 yard line so won't even have to measure it's a first down for the Mountaineers. This is one of the best offensive drives West Virginia has put together. They're starting to get into the flow as I mentioned before. But this is is, is going to be a big confidence booster as a unit for this team. Um, you're able to convert on some third downs. You're squeezing out some tough yardage. And once you get back to the sideline to, regardless of what happens on this drive you're able to say to yourself okay. This feels good. We're able to get out there. We can produce as a unit and execute. It's time to play some football. Fullback Logan Timmons is checked into the game. Give to Petaway. Petaway cuts back to the right. Landon Word, the Virginia transfer. Able to make the stop for James Madison. Pick up of about a yard on that first down play. You know, it's been a slow process for this offense, and it's starting to come around. But the one thing that the players have to do, once they get back to the sideline, you have to communicate with your coaches. This is what I see when I'm out on the field. They're not going to be able to catch everything. They do have coaches upstairs in the box, but your player perspective on field in the middle of the action is what's going to truly give these coaches a good look as to what's going on. Kendall back. Looking, throws, complete McCoy. McCoy out near midfield. Pushed out of bounds as he gets into James Madison territory. They're going to mark him at the 49 yard line. It'll bring up a third and two. McCoy is so valuable to this offense. Talked about uh, his his versatility, being a running back, able to catch the ball out of the backfield, create some mismatches. And that's going to be a, a positive for West Virginia because when it is, uh, you know, third and long, things break down on the back end, you're able to check it down and get the ball into McCoy's hands. Third and two. And that's a movement on the right side of the offensive line. Looked like Wickline may have Ball jumped start, early. Start. Offense, Offense number 72. Five yard penalty, still third down. And it was Kelby Wickline. Yep, that's his second false start in this game so far. Again, you have to be able to have poise as an offensive lineman. People talk about quarterbacks hanging in the pocket. It's the same thing as a, as a right tackle, left tackle, or any offensive lineman position. You have to be able to hold your water and sit down in that stance regardless of what's going on. A shift from up front from the defensive line, you have to hold in. Turns a third and two into a third and seven. Kendall back, blitz coming, lofts one. And it is too far intended for Bryce Wheaton and you wonder what the play call would have been on third and two and how costly that penalty was and that is exactly what I what I like to emphasize because the whole play calling perspective changes from a third and two and a third and five that or third and four is it, it's a medium down in distance uh, you you have a stable of running backs that you can turn around and give the ball to uh, to pick up two yards versus a third and four where you're not quite sure you're not in that very gray area. Here's Groudon back to kick snaps a good one boot is away Amos wants to call the fair catch and does so at the 19 yard line which is where James Madison will take over in a tie game 155 remaining after the 35 yard punt it is a 10 10 ball game.
For the two teams exchanging impressive opening drives to begin this second half. Kendall Dean on the receiving end of this one from Ben DiNucci, who uses his feet. A little wrinkle then comes up with the reverse, but also along the way here, West Virginia able to come up with some big plays. The sack by Ruben Jones and then Akeem Bailey right at the goal line here. Yeah, it's been a very different second half for this West Virginia defense. Offense as well, for that matter, but these teams are starting to settle in. We're starting to see players being uh, uh, football players for, for West Virginia defensively. So I think this is a good thing. They have to now build on what they've already established. Danucci on the keep. Darius Stills wasn't buying. Maybe a yard pickup for Danucci off that left side. Now for James Madison, I think it's important to continue to utilize this clock. Keep the ball on the ground and, and chip away at what this West Virginia defense is going to give them. They've played a great game so far. But this West Virginia defense is starting to come alive. We're starting to see some more exotic looks. Danucci back, looking under pressure, throws. This is Hamilton out in the flat, and Hamilton able to shrug off a tackle and pick up a few yards. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the 22, so a pickup of just two, and it's a third and seven. We didn't see a lot of movement defensively by West Virginia in that first half. Right now, you're starting to see some linebackers walk up to the line. You're starting to see some movement on the back end. That can be confusing for Danucci. Not in the first half, you didn't see any of it, but the second half, you're getting more movement on the back end, and it's important as a quarterback to make sure you understand where that free safety is at at all times. Third and seven. Danucci back, pressure, and is able to get away from the first wave, but not the second. Down he goes. It was Dante Stills leading the charge. So a Stills sandwich there. Darius on the first play. Dante on the third play. It has to be good out there playing with your brother. Two defensive linemen. Your father was a, a, a legendary linebacker, defensive end at this university. But again, going back to this defense, they're giving more looks. They're able to get home to the quarterback, and this pressure is really starting to mount on Jay James Madison as an offense. Ariel Kelly back in punt formation. Gets it away. Low liner. Sinkfield at his 40. Sinkfield makes one move and then wrapped up, and he'll go down at the 44 yard line. So it'll be very good field position for the Mountaineers. Right down at the 44 yard line. 10-10 ball game. One second remains in the third quarter. Back in just a moment. Remains in the third quarter in Morgantown of a tie game. James Madison and West Virginia. Mountaineers have the ball at their own 44-yard line. And I think we can safely assume this will be the final play of the third quarter. Never know. Never know. Should be. Hey. You would think. Kendall with a snap. Back out to Sinkfield in the flat. Incomplete. Couldn't hang on. A couple times he's been unable to connect with Kendall. Kendall and Sinkfield incomplete there. So it'll be a second and ten when we resume. The Mountaineers get the 28-yard pass from Kendall to Campbell. They've made some stops defensively, and we are knotted at 10, heading to the fourth. The Signetti name runs deep here at West Virginia, but the last time that James Madison head coach Kurt Signetti was in Morgantown was back in 1999. He was a, a coach at the University of Pittsburgh at the time. Now, that day resulted in a loss for him, but he was also here for another special day at Pushkar Stadium. In 1980, he was the backup quarterback for West Virginia. He said he remembers everything wasn't done yet. They were taking quarterback snaps in a concrete room, but the best part about it was that John Denver flew in to sing country roads. Meg, thanks very much. Oh, beautiful lofted pass from Kendall to Tevin Bush for a first down. Doesn't get any better than that. That was pretty great touch by Kendall. Get the replay here, but Austin Kendall able to get some great touch on this. And Bush keeping his eyes on it, able to keep a foot in bounds right before going out of bounds. That was great execution. Down to the 43, first down for the Mountaineers and the opening play of the fourth quarter. Kendall back, looking, now in some trouble, and down he goes.
Chased in the backside by Daka and then brought down by Amos. And there's Amos in the backfield. Talk about him being a free safety, but very aggressive, very physical. Likes to come down and run support. You know, Meg was talking about that story in the opening game at Mountaineer Field. Frank Signetti, of course, gone by then. The head coach for West Virginia, who is so instrumental in building this field and going around and stumping the state and building up support as West Virginia coaches are wont to do. And uh, wasn't here to see the opener, but his son Kurt was, of course, Frank, a Hall of Fame coach at IUP in West Virginia, 199 career victories. Kendall back, looking, fires, and oh, a diving grab by Sean Ryan at the 34-yard line, about a yard short, but a terrific grab by Sean Ryan. This is a great job by Austin Kendall keeping things alive. You can see a good release right here by Sean Ryan. He's able to lose the defender, works back outside, and Kendall puts it in a spot where only Sean Ryan is able to come up with that catch. That was great route running. And again, this is where you build the chemistry from a quarterback and a wide receiver and understanding each other and how things are going to work once the play breaks down. Third and one. And he'll walk back up, look over to the sideline. Here's the give to Petaway. Petaway looking, and now Petaway goes backwards. Rondell Carter with the stop. He only needed a yard, but couldn't find any room. And Carter is able to stop him for a loss, and now it'll bring up a fourth down. Now we've called this guy's name all day today. Rondell Carter able to fight off the block. Make the tackle for a loss. You see numerous white hats from James Madison. Great defensive effort as a unit. Fourth down offense stays out there. Kendall looking over. And it looks like Neil Brown's going to want to call a timeout and does with 12.30 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And a big, big situation here. Fourth and two. First really big decision for head coach Neil Brown. The sellout crowd of 61,891 bearing witness to the first big decision here for Neil Brown as he is trying to do what all these FBS teams have done and that is fend off serious challenge from FCS teams today. Watch for a dummy call, watch for a hard count if you're James Madison defense. Fourth and two. Electing to go for it. Kendall moves McCoy. McCoy in motion. Kendall throws. Complete first down. It is Sam James on the receiving end. And the Mountaineers on the fourth and two pick up the first down. This is exactly what I talked about in the open. Who's going to emerge as some of these younger players to benefit this offense to be able to help out? Sam James coming up with a huge fourth down catch. Here's McCoy wrestled out of bounds by Holloway. Picks up a couple down to the 25. Yeah, I think it's important for West Virginia to not abandon their running game. Right now, I think you feel a little bit of pressure. Scores tied up. You're getting close to the red zone. But you have a stable of backs that you're able to depend on. The passing game has been working, but let's not forget these stable running backs in the backfield. And very little success running the ball. And here's the give to McCoy, and McCoy is met in the backfield. Wayne Davis flying in again with Rashad Robinson. The Mountaineers, you talked about that great stable of running backs, but now losing a couple, just 22 yards rushing in this game against James Madison. Yeah. It's been a long day for Kelby Wickline, on the right tackle for West Virginia. These guys are the defensive ends, I should say, for James Madison. You have a little bit of pressure coming off of the edge with Rashad Robinson, but the defensive end, McGinley, just just too much to handle for Kelby Wickline. It's been a long day for Wickline. McGinley, Rondo Carter's been over on that side as well. Carter moves to the other side of the formation. Third and long, it's McCoy up the middle. McCoy will be wrapped up, taken down at the 26. So I think the clear sign here that Neil Brown wants to send out Evan Staley in the field goal unit and try to get the lead back. I'm not going to say I completely disagree with this call. You want to be safe. You want to go ahead and try to get the points if you can get it. You don't want to try to force anything. You're within range. You can go up 13-3 here. Well, in a game that is a tough game, style points count for nothing. It's just the end of the game where you 1-0 or you 0-1. And 
I think getting Staley out here for the 43 yard field goal attempt will help lead to 1 0 for the Mountaineers. Staley's boot is up. And Staley's kick is good. And the Mountaineers back on top. Never led by more than three. The lead right now is 13 10. 10 26 remaining in the fourth quarter. We hope you tune in every Tuesday on AT&T Sportsnet for the West Virginia Football Press Conference. Comes your way at 5.30. Coach Neil Brown talks about the last game and the upcoming game. Will he be talking about a West Virginia victory over James Madison? We have 10 minutes and 26 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Perhaps more to decide that. And, of course, he'll be asked about, I'm sure, the game coming up at Missouri next week as well. There is Neil Brown went for it on a fourth down on that drive and then Evan Staley's field goal putting the Mountaineers up second lead of the game 13 to 10. Staley with the boot. Across the 20. Ooh, wow. Amos has hit hard as he gets out to about the 28 yard line. And done a nice job with Punting the ball away from Amos and on the kickoffs uh, he hasn't been able to get much accomplished either. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. West Virginia special teams have done a good job keeping him contained. We talked about how explosive and dynamic he is in the return game. For the most part, West Virginia has done their part. Well, they get a muffed punt. They get a blocked field goal attempt. So special teams has been solid for West Virginia. Now the defense trying to rise to the challenge. Find themselves leading 13 to 10. I think it's important for this defense to try to build on that last series. They're starting to gel together. Now you need to start to make some plays. Canucci in trouble. Peeling back, looking, throwing, and intercepted. Picked off by Washington. And Washington settles to the turf at the 30-yard line, but a big play by the senior Keith Washington. And that's the big play that you needed. Ben DiNucci doing a good job running around. He's, he's escaping pressure, but right here, just a little too much here on that football. Keith Washington in the right place at the right time. He was another one that we had in a meeting yesterday who talked about having a chip on his shoulder, wanting to come out here and prove to the world that they're wrong about where you picked us in the Big 12. That was a great play by him. Now he sets this West Virginia offense up to possibly get more points on the board. Washington originally began at Michigan, went the community college route to Wind up in Morgantown, second year starter for West Virginia. Now McCoy, right to the left. Kendall back, throws underneath to James. James looking for some blocking, and James taken down by Daka and Robinson, but he picks up about nine on that first down play. Yeah, that tunnel screen was much uh, better executed than the first try. Sam James getting some blocks right here. And talked about Kel Kelby Wickline. He's able to keep the pressure out of Kendall's face. But right from there, you get the ball into Sam James' hands, and he's able to get that speed and get downfield. Second, and we'll call it two. Give to McCoy off the left side and wrapped up immediately and taken down. No running room for McCoy is Dimitri Holloway. Mentioned the team's leading tackler from a year ago. Steps up to make the stop. Well, Holloway has been busy. Seems to be in a little pain right there, but for the most part, this James Madison first and second level has done a good job slowing down these backs from West Virginia all game. Now with time winding down, under nine minutes remaining, James Madison desperate to keep West Virginia out of the end zone. Kendall back, fires, man wide open, it's Bush, who's caught it, touchdown, Mountaineers. A 22-yard touchdown pass from Kendall to Bush. The offensive coordinator from West Virginia said Tevin Bush is probably one of the best inside fade runners on this team. He has a good feel for spacing, he has a good feel for beating the defender off of the line of scrimmage. Right there, that was 24. Amos just lost in the mix, and Austin Kendall doing a good job of getting that ball up and right back down into Bush. Able to concentrate and pull it in for six. Evan Staley on to try the extra point. His kick is up, 
His kick is good and the Mountaineers have stretched the lead to 10. Austin Kendall finding Tevin Bush a three play 30 yard drive capped off by this 22 yard touchdown to put the Mountaineers up by 10. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under the broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of West Virginia University and Learfield IMG College. Now the Mountaineers get the big touchdown pass after the turnover. Keith Washington comes away with the interception and the 22-yard hookup from Kendall to Tevin Bush. You and I were talking off camera prior to the fourth quarter. Felt like West Virginia was beginning to get some momentum. A turnover might decide things. It's not decided yet, but well, you get the sense that these guys right here, James Madison, need a big play. Well, definitely need a big play, and right here is a good kickoff return to start the series off on offense. But for West Virginia, offensively and defensively, it took uh, some time to get things rolling. They went into halftime, uh, made some adjustments. Defensively, they started to move around a little bit more, uh, try to just give some different looks to the Jay Madison, James Madison offense, and uh, it, it worked out. They were able to get some pressure, rotations on the back end and the secondary, and Keith Washington coming up with a huge interception on that last drive for West Virginia. It was a huge play for that defense. Solid 30 yard return by Polk, but James Madison needs to accelerate things a little bit. Here's Van Horse off the right side. Tom Curry on the stop after a pickup of four out to the 44. You know, it's amazing what a little bit of momentum can do. You can see this energy from the West Virginia defense now. Guys are starting to fly to the ball a little bit more. I personally didn't see that in the first, second quarter. But it's almost like they're coming to life here. Here's Van Horst dragged down by Jeffrey Pooler from the backside. No gain in the play. So now a third and six. Not fast. James Madison finds themselves in a third and six situation. You even feel the energy from the crowd. You're getting a little more noise on third down. Early in the game, it was quiet. You can hear a pin drop. This is what the fans wanted to see out of this team today. You want to hurry up, but you don't want to hurry up and punt, right? You want to make sure you run your offense and execute if you're James Madison and pick up this first down here on the third and six. Danucci back looking throws underneath complete the Polk across midfield and Polk down to the 45 yard line before he's gang tackled led by Keith Washington. That was a very nice route by Brandon Polk excuse me Brandon Polk number three. He's able to find the soft spot in that zone. Pick up some big yardage on that third down conversion. 16 yard pickup nice work by Sean Mahone the first there. Washington helps out afterwards. First down at the 45 yard line. Danucci to give to Van Horse. Van Horse wrapped up from behind by Tonkery, but able to power forward for about a four yard pickup down to the 40. And we haven't heard a lot from Van Horse. Had a really big first quarter. That's for Dean. Had some trouble slowing him down, but ever since then. We pretty much had him in check. Danucci throws and Danucci incomplete behind his intended receiver. Kendall Dean looked like Bailey got just enough of him to jar that ball loose. Yeah, I'm not sure if Kendall Dean would have been in bounds to make that a completion. We'll get another look here on this replay, but. Yep, Bailey credit him with a pass breakup here. And to get the hand in there. James Madison four for ten on third down. Ball at the 40 yard line of the Mountaineers. Empty set for Danucci. Pressure coming. Danucci in trouble. Danucci able to slide out to his right. Throws on the run and complete as Dean hauls it in down to the 21 yard line. Well, he didn't make the play before, but he was able to make this one. Danucci again showing great escapability getting outside of the pocket and threading that ball into Kendall Dean 17 right on the sideline keeps James Madison alive here and mark it at the 22 as Dean you take a look at the ISO camera on him able to make the catch 
Here's the give right side. This is Hamilton. Hamilton hit in the backfield, spins inside the 20 down to the 19. That was a good play right there by Dylan Tonkery. He's able to attack that out upfield shoulder and, and turn that play back inside. So Hamilton really didn't have anywhere to go with that ball. Luckily, there were some defenders in place for West Virginia to be able to make the stop. That was good sound football by Tonkery. Give up the middle. Hamilton brought down as he crosses the 15. In fact, they're going to call him down right at the 15 yard line. Norwood comes up to make the stop for West Virginia. This is going to be a huge third down for James Madison. If I'm West Virginia, I'm thinking pressure right here. Third and three. Handoff left side and not much for Hamilton. Maybe a yard down to the 14 yard line and now a decision and it's going to be a quick one. They're going to send the field goal unit out to try to make this a one score game. And great penetration. That's Reese Donahue. And Donahue doing a nice job of Stopping him right in his tracks. 31 yard field goal attempt now for Radke. Clearly a must make for James Madison to draw this to within a one score game. Radke's kick is up and Radke's kick is good. And James Madison able to march back down after Washington had the previous two scores. They've cut it to seven. 20 to 13, 433 remaining. Bottom top. Well, India leading by the score now of 20 to 13. Out here, Nation, a little silent early, but they've had much more to cheer about. The defense has risen to the challenge. They come up with a big turnover right there by Keith Washington, and that has helped with the touchdown pass to Tevin Bush to put them up by seven and some dancing, although. Not a victory dance just yet. Not yet. But the two big plays back to back really helped. That interception by Washington, as you mentioned. And then again, Tevin Bush able to beat Amos in the corner on that inside fade. Put West Virginia back up on the board. Six more points. Well, that is, we've been talking about the special teams and worried a little bit about West Virginia's ability to slow down D'Angelo Amos, but. They've had the better of the special teams play. Now they, they kick off out of bounds, and so it comes out to the 35-yard line. So excellent field position for West Virginia here when you're hoping you can pin them down maybe inside the 20. I think that's a great thing by Neil Brown again. Having that, that special teams uniqueness, the, the passion and wanting to do well on special teams because that can win you a game or can also lose you a game. So having the emphasis uh, getting your guys in the right place, making sure they, they take it serious because, again, that can cost you a game uh, in a situation like this. Number one in the nation in special teams efficiency, efficiency. last year at yeah. Troy. Taskins in motion. Give to McCoy up the middle, and McCoy wrapped up, dropped after a pickup of a yard. Uh, right now is a crucial time for these West Virginia running backs to understand, keep that ball tucked. James Madison will be reaching for it, trying to strip it out, doing any and everything they can do in their power to get that ball on the ground. Expends a timeout right here. So interesting, beginning to make a little bit of a stand here. And, you know, this is interesting that Coach Signetti is doing this, and I wonder if it's in part because the offense hasn't shown that explosive quick strike capability. They seem to be at their best with the longer, more time consuming drives, the mix of the run and the pass. And, you know, a lot of times if you wait to use your timeouts, you get it back with two minutes left, you're pretty much a one dimensional offense. Yep. If they can get the stop here, maybe they can use more of their offense. Yeah, you can be a little more versatile within the offense. You made a good point. You become one dimensional. You have two minutes. You get into that two minute offense. Every defensive player knows once a team is out there and they're running two minute, they're going to attack the sidelines, try to keep the ball out of the middle of the field, and, and just take what the defense gives them. So that's a really good point you make. So second and eight. And now we'll see what Neil Brown counters with. His defense has 
held James Madison to 13 points. And last year with Troy with an injured quarterback he became a coach that relied on defense and special teams to try to win games they've also been a high octane team down in the Sun Belt Conference so again get a view to what he plans to do here and he wants to throw and he wants to throw deep and oh just off the outstretched fingers of Sam James who had a step down the far sideline. Mm. Right before that play started, I didn't want to cut you off, but I was going to say I'm surprised James Madison is still in man-to-man -man coverage. They've been beaten down the field, and right there they're still playing man-to-man, -man, and I'm talking about bump and run in the face of these receivers, trying the young freshman, Sam James, but he has that speed. He has good technique, able to work his release and get down the field. James Madison escaped the bullet right there. Yeah, a lot of confidence in Rashad Robinson, but James had a step on him. James can fly the Georgia 6A 400 meter state champion so you know he can run and here's a give up the middle and it is McCoy to the 40 and McCoy is stopped there and so with the incompletion now the timeout used by James Madison they're able to salvage some clock salvage a timeout so you, know, you love the aggressive call but if it doesn't work out now James Madison with an extra timeout and a little more time when they presumably get the ball back after this punt Yep, and, and that's where this West Virginia defense is really going to be tested. It's uh, been a different second half, as I've mentioned, but right now you're going to be put to the test because there's going to be a little more sense of urgency. There's going to be a little more tempo. James Madison will get to the line of scrimmage quick, try to utilize this clock in their favor. Neil Brown, his first coach, uh, coaching experience here at West Virginia. He's embraced the community and of course, this is a community used to winning. It's been a great winning tradition here at West Virginia University. And, you know, fortunately enough, it has been in the, in the years of transition. You have Dana Holgerson coming in. A lot of times you get new coaches in and, and the program can fall off. So well, that ball is just a hammer. So you and I were talking about Browden in his unique style running one way kicking it back across the other he's got a variety of different kicks that one he just you know that was sort of the traditional style punt from the Australian native and he hammered it 60 yards touchback and James Madison will take over at their own 20 yard line yep showing off the leg strength there he's he's shown the, the move the pocket kick away from the returner style kick the rugby style right there just a just a boomstick, they call it. A boomstick. Boomstick. All right. And now Ben Denucci comes out. 80 yards from pay dirt. James Madison needs a touchdown and an extra point to tie the game. Here's a give off the right side. It's Douglas. Douglas will pick up a couple. Ajay Obese, I beg your pardon, is the running back in there. I haven't seen much of him since the beginning of the game, the junior. Yeah, it's think, about two. I think James Madison wanted to come in and, and get a little more production out of Ajay Obese this evening or this afternoon, but you know, again, this, this defense from West Virginia finally able to pull it together, and when he is back in the game, this defense has been juiced up, able to slow down this running attack from James Madison. Kanuchi on a second and eight. Back pressure down he goes Darius Stills who has made his presence felt in this game comes up with another sack. A lot of these defensive linemen talked about the scheme difference from going that going from the 3-3-5 stack to a 4-2. Right now it's not necessarily about uh, trying to hold up offensive linemen. They can get upfield, get vertical and get to the quarterback, picking a side of the offensive linemen and actually working their technique. We've seen a lot of it today, and right there, Darius still doing a great job from his nose tackle position, coming up with a huge sack. Well, Danucci a little shaken up there. James Madison will use a timeout here to allow their quarterback to regroup a little bit. And we talked about the winning tradition in the state of West Virginia. 14th all-time winningest FBS program in this their 128th year of football. 17 bowl appearances in the last 19 years. Rashid, you've been here. You know what it's like. You know, as you see, some of the first-round picks tied for most in the Big 12 since 
2012. So we've seen talent here, and you know this is a passionate fan base that that wants their Mountaineers to win, but also expects their Mountaineers and to win. Very passionate state, and we talked about this at dinner. It's almost like West Virginia Mountaineers are the pro team of the state for the most part. You have Marshall uh, down south in Huntington, but for the most part, West Virginia is, is going to be the, the premier team of this state. Third and 15. Danucci back, slides to his right, looking in trouble, throws underneath, it's complete. Out of bounds, across the 20 to the 21-yard line goes the freshman, Austin Douglas. They're going to mark it now at the 22, so it's going to be a fourth and eight. And James Madison. Oh, they're going to bring the punt unit out. Oh, interesting. So out of timeouts, and they will punt the ball away. Nobody back deep to receive for the Mountaineers. And Kelly, the low liner. A little bit unfortunate for James Madison that it squirted sideways. I think they were hoping it was going to tumble down with that low kick and they could pin him deep. As it is, Mountaineers will take over at the 27-yard line. They're up by seven, 235 remaining, and James Madison is out of timeouts. If I'm Neil Brown here, if I'm Matt Moore, the offensive coordinator, I stay in attack mode. I, I need to walk away from this game with a sense of comfort. And not that you're going to get it just from this last series, but I would like my starters to continue to play this game out. It's not over just yet, but I need to see more. I want to see better execution. I want to get that game experience for some of these younger uh, receivers, more inexperienced receivers. You're not suggesting they throw the ball here, are you? If you need to throw the ball, you throw it. You, you have to do what you need to do to set your team up to do well in the future. Petaway moves from the right to the left, gets the ball back. Petaway up the middle and crosses the 30 to about the 31-yard line. Clock continues to roll, under 230 remaining. There's nothing more valuable than game experience, and I learned that as a young player, as a freshman, it's completely different from practice in a game atmosphere. You get out there, things are happening a lot different. Everything is so much faster, and the only way to get used to that is being into the game on game day and actually executing the offense that's going to be called not uh, all run plays where you're coming off the line of scrimmage and you're blocking if you're a receiver or just leaning into a defensive lineman if you're if you're an offensive lineman. Well, this is one thing question from a clock perspective did not want to see. That's Michael Brown going down with an injury. A, a really interesting story for Michael Brown uh, is now hobbling off the field. The guy who had a heart issue growing up and his parents didn't want him to play football. He didn't play till he wound up at Eastern Arizona Community College. And now he finds himself after a fine career there, red shirting and then coming into the Mountaineers and starting at left guard. Yeah, and you hope he's okay. Matt Moore talked about trying to find 10 offensive linemen coming into the season. He didn't find 10, so he said he would go with eight. From that eight, he said he couldn't find another one, so he had to go with seven that he could rotate in. So that would be a blow to this offensive line if he is out. Eight left in the play clock. Kendall trying to milk the clock, but instead we have a false start on the left side. So they do get the clock down to 159. However, it will be a five-yard penalty. False start, offense, number 87. Five-yard penalty, still second down. James Madison has elected to have the clock start on the snap. Now, why wouldn't you? Well, this game is far from over. With mistakes like that, you stop the clock. If James Madison can continue to make plays, they could possibly get the ball back here if West Virginia doesn't have good clock management. Head away off the right side, and he is stacked up. 25-yard line. They reset the play clock. There's going to be about 115 or so when this ball is snapped again as we see Brown check back in. James Committer, who 
Saw some brief time earlier. We'll check back out. West Virginia. 12 on the play clock. Get about 115 when they snap this and then. They'll have to punt it away you would think with about 30 seconds or so remaining and actually they're not going to snap it here. So with 114 left they call timeout. They'll run a play then they'll get the play clock going. So you figure about 30 seconds left. They'll be punting the ball away if James Madison can come up with a stop here and if. West Virginia keeps the ball on the ground and these are situations you work on in practice for this very moment. Clock management is a, is a very big thing in college football and any level of football for that matter. But you have to understand down and distance. You have to understand timeout situations and what could potentially happen if the other ball get, or if the other team gets the ball back. Now right now James Madison doesn't have any timeouts so it's going to be a challenge for them to do anything if they were to see this ball again. But as a as an offensive player you have to understand situations and what to do with the football as a quarterback for Austin Kendall you want to try to milk that play clock down to the very last second and snap that ball off you don't want to leave any time on the clock for James Madison to be able to utilize that and the Mountaineers play this game then they're at Missouri next week a game we mentioned briefly Missouri picked to finish third in the SEC East and it's NC State a team like West Virginia also receiving votes and at Kansas as they jump into Big 12 play Texas Iowa State and Oklahoma three consecutive ranked opponents so uh, the Mountaineers would love to be one and zero as they move on to the next phase of their schedule yep. It'll be pretty grueling so I hope you can get the guys who are injured get them healthy continue to build on what you started Here's Kendall rolling out. Kendall will throw underneath and in and out of the hands of his receiver. Well designed play. Sam James couldn't hang on. And now, again, that's an aggressive play call you were talking about, but it's also going to allow, you know, we talked about maybe 30 seconds left when you'd punt the ball away. It's going to be 108 now when they kick it away to the dangerous. D'Angelo Amos. Well, Neil Brown says something during camp about this West Virginia team. Their bad has to get better. And right there is a situation where that bad has to get better. You have to make that catch. There's no no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Sam James has to haul that catch in. Snap to Grout. Grout boots it away. A lineup to Amos. Amos. It's the first man beat. And uh, George Campbell had him beat the first time, but Campbell able to scramble back and stay with the play and stop him after a two yard return. So, with 58 seconds left, no timeouts for James Madison. They must score and get the extra point to tie the game and send it into overtime. So, defensively for West Virginia, this is also a situation that you practice. You can't get too soft because James Madison will just attack the perimeter of the field, get their receivers the ball and step out of bounds and try to let that clock work in their favor. So you can't lay off too softly here. You have to continue to apply some pressure, but you don't want to get too tight because if they get behind you, then they're going to go for six. Van Horst alone setback. Two receivers split to each side. Set the play clock. Game clock says 58 seconds. Ben DiNucci gets the snap. Back looking, throws underneath, complete first down yardage. The hustle to the line of scrimmage. It was Dean Ravenel, the sophomore, who comes up with a reception. Get to the line of scrimmage and get this next play snap. DiNucci back, looking. DiNucci now will talk. He'll go. DiNucci with a flag behind the play is going to pick up the first down. Now, Liam Fornadel and Quandarius Qualls were tangled up behind the play, and they're going to get Fornadel with a hold. Here to run. Holding. Offense. Number 77, 10-yard penalty. Still first down. And the preseason third-team All-American called with the hold here. And there it is. You can see that right hand gets the jersey to the ground. And they'll call that every single time the big right tackle. And costly there really he just of course had he known he just shielded. Falls off that play would have stood. 
Instead, a costly penalty with 38 seconds remaining. Clock rolling. And that'll another preseason All-American for James Madison. Danucci looking. Danucci firing down the field and through a lot of contact down there. James Madison side wanted some flags thrown, but none thrown and appeared to be a good non-call. Somewhat forced, but you have to take a shot down the field. Ooh, well, that's Kerry Martin Jr. in coverage. Uh -huh. I think he did have a refs. little hand up there yeah. on Ravenel. Yeah. The true freshman, Kerry Martin, from Charleston, West Virginia. Second down, 25 seconds remains. Danucci trouble from the backside, and Danucci taken down. Ruben Jones with a sack. And now James Madison trying to hurry up, get their quarterback off the ground so they can at least snap it one more time. On a third down, West Virginia retreating. Everybody back deep. Danucci back. Danucci looks in trouble, and down he goes. Ball is picked up and squirts loose. However, it is whistled dead, and it is a Mountaineers hard-fought victory to begin the Neil Brown era. A game many predicted they would lose. The Mountaineers come away with a 20 to 13 win. I really like the effort by West Virginia, especially in the second half. First half, very questionable. Uh, there, there was a lot of uh, uh, uncertainties, and West Virginia made some adjustments in that second half, able to bring things together offensively, defensively, and they made it happen. Well, James Madison, second-ranked team in the FCS ranks, certainly nothing to hang their heads about. They made some mistakes. They had some costly turnovers in this game, but clearly showed why they are predicted to be one of the top teams in the FCS ranks. Uh, they're going to be a top team in their conference. They're, they're going to run the table. Uh, too many athletes not to be good. They're, they'll pretty much run the table again for, for the majority of the season. And things start to change once you get into the playoffs. But that's a very good James Madison team. Very good players. Offense is solid. Defense is solid. And they gave West Virginia a run for their money. And the Mountaineers able to hang in there. Neil Brown in his first game as the West Virginia coach. Knew this was going to be a tough one. There was no question about it. Coaches his first game here and against a very good, very talented James Madison team. And we said the last four years they've walked out of FCS stadiums, FBS stadiums with two victories over SMU and East Carolina. Really routed East Carolina a couple of years ago. They took NC State down to the wire last season, a 9-3 NC State team. So, again, for fans that might not be overly football savvy and it doesn't look like a good victory, this is a good victory. Oh, it's a very good victory. You, you have to take it for what it's worth. You have an experience, not necessarily young guys, but just players who haven't been in there, and you're putting a product out on the field that you have no idea what you're going to get. So the fact that uh, you have a new transition, new coach, new offense, new defense, you're waiting for it all to come together. It's not going to happen in that first game. We've talked about it. But in the end, they were able to put a good package together in the second half, make some changes, make some adjustments. And that's what the coaches are for. That's what the assistants are for. You look at what can be uh, improved on, and, and you make changes on the fly and roll with it. And for all the worries about the mistakes this team might make, and we heard uh, Meg Bolger talking about that early, that, and he told us yesterday, look, I expect my team to make mistakes, but you know we need to play hard. And I'm sure there will be you know, mistakes as far as drops and some fundamental issues, but West Virginia won the turnover battle, and that proved to be a huge, huge part of this victory today. Nine times out of ten, that's going to win you the football game. You win that turnover battle, not saying that there are moments where a team can turn the ball over and, and be victorious, but if, if you win that turnover battle, you're going to be in good shape to win the football game, and in the end, West Virginia did just that. Good effort. All right, let's go downstairs. Meg Bolger with the victorious coach of the Mountaineers. Well, Coach, you said yesterday you would be at, pe at peace with some mistakes that were going to be made. Uh, it wasn't always pretty, but a win is a win, and it is your first in Morgantown. Yeah, that's the most important thing. We won the game, and it's always easier to teach and correct after a win. 
Uh, it was ugly at times. Let's call it what it was. I mean, it's ugly at times. Part of it, they're good. They're good. Part of it is our guys played like they've never been out here before, and about 65% of them never been out here before. So, hey, all in all, hey, we're one and zero, and that's all we want to do at the end of the day. What did you have to say to your team at half? You said a lot of inexperience. What was the message? What was the teaching going on at half? Because in the second half, it was a different team. Yeah, just play. That, that was my message. Is let's just go play. It, the first half went probably as bad as you it possibly could, but we were seven to three. And I knew we, if we would just keep on, especially, I knew offensively we were close. As ugly as it looked in the first half, we were really close. So I knew if we would just stay with it, we hit a big play to start the, start the half, and it kind of carried over from there. What are some things this week that you're going to look to clean up on the offensive side and the defensive side? Well, defensively, we got to get our run fits better. Um, you know, they took advantage of some things we were doing. We were trying to play in coverage, and they hit some runs up inside. Thought we did a better job in the second half. And then we've got to figure out a way to run the football. They, they muddied everything up, and we've got to figure out a way to give our backs some space. Well, Coach, congratulations. Enjoy it with your family, and enjoy Morgantown. Thanks. Yeah, thank Rob? Meg, thanks very much. Head Coach Neil Brown comes in, and in his first game in Morgantown, in a tough game, which we forecast. Again, a lot of people thought James Madison was going to come into Morgantown and win this game. It is the Mountaineers who come away with a victory. Hard fought, and again, you're Neil Brown. All you really care about now is being 1-0 and and not 0-1. You want to know, you build on it, you get better, and that's what it's about from week to week. You let your guys sit down, take it all in, but from here, you have to get better. Well, the Mountaineers... The Neil Brown era begins with a victory, and it is also the era for a new quarterback for the Mountaineers, who is Austin Kendall. Oh, no, uh, he goes 27 of 42, 260 yards and two touchdowns, and he is downstairs with Meg Bulger. A lot of firsts for your coach, and it's a long road for you to get here. What does it mean to you, and how does it feel, uh, first win as a starting quarterback? It's awesome. Uh, it's just a great team win. I mean, offensively, our de I mean, defense, they really showed out for us. They, they really took care of us out there. And offense as a whole, we just have to do a lot better. I mean, we got to run the ball better, pass the ball better. I got to take care of the ball better. And, I mean, it just feels awesome. I mean, finally, I got a couple hits under my belt. Uh, I'm finally playing uh, after three years, so it's been good. What was the message and the attitude like in the locker room at half? It was a rough first half, but you guys came out firing in the second. He said 7-3, and we get the ball back at half and go down and score, we'll win this game, and that's what will happen. So, What are some of the X factors that you guys need to work on this week headed into Missouri? I mean, just taking care of our rules um, as a quarterback, getting the right reads, making the right protection. Uh, I see corner blitz. I needed to call out corner blitz. Uh, same with everybody else, just, just the little things. You'll feel a little sore tomorrow now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, Austin. Rob? Meg, thanks very much, and I'm sure you can identify with Austin Kendall. First start, this kind of atmosphere, uh, a, a great game, a great memory, but also a great one to have in the rearview mirror. Oh, yeah, you, you get that first game under your belt, you take a few licks, you get to feel what it's like to being out there again. So this is going to be a build, uh, uh, something to build on for Austin Kendall and the rest of the offense. So the Mountaineers, a hard-fought victory over James Madison. 20-13 to 13 is the final for Rashid Marshall, for Meg Bulger. Our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew, I'm Rob King. Thanks for watching West Virginia Football on AT&T Sportsnet.